thank God for the former holy prophets, and we thank God for the former holy apostles. We thank God today for our leader, another holy apostle that God saw fit to put in the earth to give us the words to eternal life. We thank God also for all the ministering brothers that is laboring around the world with the man of God in word and in doctrine. We thank God for this combined uh, anniversary, Del Mar, Delaware, and also Baltimore. Without any further ado, I present to you our leader, teacher, and guide, Pastor Gino Jennings. Greetings, brothers and sisters. As always, we bear witness there is no God but one. There is no God with him. There is no God besides him. There is no God greater than him or equal to him. We're glad for all of our ministers and all of our brothers and sisters and guests that are here this afternoon. We are grateful to God for Baltimore and the Del Mar Temple and all of you that are here in Del Mar, or rather in Dover, Delaware. We had a beautiful meeting last night. 21 was baptized so far in the name of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the word of the Lord is the most precious thing that God have ever given men. And one thing I've learned about Satan, if you're motivated to go forward in God, the devil is also motivated to make you go backward. Anything that you ever desire to achieve, the mission of Satan is to stop you from getting those things done. And you bear in mind, he don't care what he have to do, how he have to do it, or who or what he have to use. The objective of the devil is that you just don't make it with God. Now, I know the message last night was pretty hard for some. Amen. Because when you bother people's Christmas, when you bother that Christmas spirit and rebuke it, you have to rebuke the Christmas spirit and cast it out of people. And when you do that, people think you're trying to get rid of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> but uh, the Bible says we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. We didn't always know. You're just fortunate if your understanding come open. And you're blessed to be able to understand scripture. I want to work on spiritual warfare. Amen. Spiritual confrontation. All of us here and everyone that are listening are in a conflict now. There's a war between you and God's will. And anyone say that they're not having a conflict, well, you keep living. Your conflict is waiting. Because for anybody to do this the right way, every child of God is going to have an argument, a debate, a conflict, some type of quarrel between something that God says versus what you want to do. And if you read the scriptures, the devil always involved himself. Now we're talking about the same one that caused such havoc and disorder in heaven. I marvel at men who get over the air and say the devil don't have no power. Something's wrong with you. In fact, the devil is making you tell that lie. The devil used men to convince the human family that Satan is not as strong as the Bible show us that he is. And if you don't believe how strong the devil is, then you will underestimate him 
and overestimate yourself. The Apostle Paul, born in Tarsus in the city of Cilicia, sat under the feet of Gamaliel, who was a doctor of the law. Gamaliel was a Pharisee. And he taught Brother Saul according to the perfect manner of the law. But he did not teach Paul the revelation of Scripture. He just taught Paul according to the perfect manner of the law. And even the law knew it was one God. That's right. But when God later on revealed himself in Paul and gave Paul the revelation of truth, Paul stood for God, but Paul was in conflict with himself. I want to show you this, brothers and sisters. In the book of you know, Romans, a lot of folks think it's strange because you have the Holy Ghost. You still have problems. <laughs> I, I don't understand why people think this way. You know, folks think that if they baptize or get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and receive the Holy Ghost speaking in tongue, it's just smooth sailing <laughs> with you and Jesus. Sometimes you see people who act like it's smooth sailing. You hmm. see them all out in the street giving out flyers and pamphlets with a big old smile on their face. Hmm. Like they just ate breakfast with Jesus. Hmm. It won't be no smooth sailing all the time. Yeah. Just evaluate the titles of the adversary. Mm -hmm. Satan is called. A roaring lion. Now, you ain't going out and pet a lion. No. If you got good sense. Mm -hmm. Satan also is called the great red dragon. Mm -hmm. Satan also is called the old serpent. Right. Old serpent means he's a master in deception. Yeah. Another dangerous title the devil have. Angel of light. That's right. Now, the Bible didn't say he is light. No. The Bible says he's transformed himself into an angel of light. <clears throat> this is not real light. Mm -hmm. This is man-made light. Real light is the light of the sun. That's right. The light of the moon. This is man-made. Satan transformed himself so he can appear to be godly. Mm -hmm. He can appear to be righteous. He can appear to be holy. Mm -hmm. Why does the devil come like this to camouflage himself? Mm -hmm. To get you not to be righteous mm -hmm. and to get you to stop being holy. So the devil come in the form of preachers, churches, social media, television. And the devil aim is to target that which stands for truth. That's, right. That's why I thank God for the truth of God telecast. My God is like a light up on the hill. Stands all alone. Can't get it mixed up with nobody. People try to sound like it, try to imitate it and all that, but it fails. A tricycle can't sound like a motorcycle. That's right. No more than a faucet drip have the effect of a tsunami. That's right. <coughs> I was watching the news this morning on CNN and, um, in Indonesia. Indonesia had an earthquake several months ago. But this time they said it was a volcano far off and Indonesia didn't get no warning. And a tsunami just came up. And, I, and the footage that they showed, I find it very interesting because they showed a Indonesian concert taking place. Everybody was gathered together. The performers were performing. And this was at night. And this tsunami wave 
just blast through the entire crowd. Knock the stage down. Wash everything away. God just came with his wrath like a thief. That goes to show you that many inventions are made, but man is not designed to predict God. Tsunami just came, and then the band leader, he survived, but he was on the air telling people to please pray. He, they lost members of the band, can't find his wife, and can't find his child. Many people dead, gone. But they was out there having worldly fun. Thank God, and God disturbed the waters. And made the waters arise and drag the living back out to sea. Now, this gospel is designed to prepare us to meet God. That's what the truth of God is over the air for. It is the strongest message, not only in America, but in the world. Because there is no message stronger than scripture. None. And the devil know how strong this message is. <clears throat> That's why the devil have always attacked the message of God. The devil attacked God. That's right. Think of it. Before God was manifested in the flesh. One thing I say about the devil, you got to say he's bold. Oh, yeah. I mean, who is it that will stand up and challenge God and tell him, oh, I'm going to be like you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be like the most high. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to take over heaven. I'm going to dethrone you. The devil in his own ignorance and foolish talk, he knew it couldn't be done. For the Lord said, who is my equal? Saith the Holy One. The devil know he can't be equal with God. But you got to respect him. At least he tried. Amen. Even now, false prophets know they're not equal to the truth of the gospel. No. But even though they try, and the objective of every false prophet <laughs> is to get you from following God. That's right. Listen at this now. In the book of Romans chapter 7. I want you to follow me and get me. Romans chapter 7, we'll start at verse 22. Uh -huh. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. Wait a minute. Hmm. Focus closely on the language of the Bible. He did not say that his flesh delight no. in the law of God. For I delight. In the law of God after the inward man. Wait a minute. What, what part delight in it? The inward man. <laughs> that's right. The spirit of God that's in him. Yeah. Delight in the things of God. Our flesh don't delight in what God said. No. That's why you're fasting and praying and asking God to help you. Mm -hmm. Choir saying, make you happy, feel good. <laughs> mm-hmm. Then the word come to remind you what you're dealing with. That's right. What you're confronted with. That's right. But our hope is in the word. Yeah. You don't have hope in nothing else. No. Thank God without God's word, you're lost. That's right. Listen. But I see another law. Uh-oh. I, I see another law. Another law in my members. Amen. It's located where? In my members. And what happened to me? Warring. <laughs> Conflict, debate, mm -hmm. argument, mm -hmm. fight. Mm -hmm. Warring with what? Against the law of my mind. Hold it right there. That's right. Let's put on our truth of God boots. <laughs> That's right. Amen. And just walk through those scriptures here. That's right. In order... For there to be another law in your members warring, warring. against the law of your mind, mm -hmm. 
your mind have to hear a law opposite from the law of your members. That's right. Because if there is no other law in your mind, if you're not taught another law, then there is no conflict between mind and body. That's right. When you was a sinner, your body act out what your mind thought. Mm -hmm. There was no conflict. No. Your mind said, I want a cigarette this morning. Your <laughs> body said, get a light. That's right. No conflict. <laughs> Your mind say, I want to smoke some weed. Mm -hmm. The body get a joint. That's right. Amen. That's right. The mind says, Friday night, I'm getting off work. I think I'll go to the boom boom room. <laughs> <laughs> go down to the club, to the boom boom room. That's right. <laughs> Huh? That's right. Sit down there and look at the boom boom room. <laughs> have your liquor, have your weed. Yeah. Putting money down and thongs and tank tops. That's right. Your mind thought it. Body it didn't disagree. No. <clears throat> so, as long as you're a sinner, mm -hmm. full of hell, right. full of your father, the devil. You agree with Satan. Ye were the servants of, of sin. Let, listen, listen at this. Listen at this now. In Romans chapter 6 and at verse 20. Listen. For when ye were the servants of sin. When ye were the servants of sin. Ye were free from righteousness. <laughs> ah, Amen. Look at here. Amen. Give chapter and verse again. Romans chapter 6 and at verse 20. When you were. The servants of sin. <coughs> the servants of sin. Ye were free from righteousness. Ye were free from doing right. That's Is right. that not the truth? That's the truth. That's right. There wasn't nobody in the club thinking about going to church? No. Huh? No. What that song in the choir just got finished singing? <laughs> The Lord is blessing me right now. Right now. You wasn't thinking about that. No. And you in the boom, boom room <laughs> dancing. No, no. Were you? You no. weren't thinking about the Lord is blessing me. You weren't thinking about that. No. You was too busy dancing according to the music of your time. That's right. That's right. So That's right. the body agreed with the carnal mind. That's right. Because it is written. They that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. flesh. Now, so body and the mind is in full agreement when you're not righteous. That's right. Now, the carnal mind is introduced to a spiritual law. That's right. And when the carnal mind is introduced now, to a divine law and start considering what it's hearing, then the kernel mind slowly but surely gravitate to the spiritual things of God. For we know that the law is spiritual. Listen at this. Now in the book of Romans chapter 7 and at verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual. That the law is spiritual. But, but I am carnal. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You bear in mind, this is Brother Paul, Paul. the apostle. That's right. Huh? That's right. The same one that said, if an angel come from heaven and <laughs> preach any other gospel than That's what right. he preached. That's right. Let the angel be a Oh, he challenged all heaven. Amen. Huh? Amen. He challenged heaven and dead angels to come to the earth and right. contradict his God-given message. That's right. But Paul was not beside himself. No. Paul still knew he was not in the spirit 24 hours a day. Amen. And look at his admission. For we know that the law yeah, is You better spiritual. give chapter and verse. I want this to be good for all overzealous and overrighteous folk. I don't care how much you speak in tongue. If you never have to, if you didn't walk here, you float <laughs> all the way down 13. And, and when you got to the toll booth, the ones in the toll booth saw the glory. 
That's right. Amen. They saw the glory upon you and just said, go on. Go on. <laughs> That's right. It doesn't matter. No, no. Thank God. Listen at this now. Romans chapter 7 and at verse 14. Bless the name of God. Come on, son. For we know that the law is we spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. Now, the laws of God, the rules of God, the regulations of God. Amen. God bring rules to regulate the church. That's right. God bring rules to regulate his people. That's right. Because if he didn't bring rules to regulate his people, then the whole world would be, as it were, in the days of Nimrod, Amen. doing everything that they want to do, not worrying about consequences at all. That's right. What did he say? For we know that the law is we spiritual. We know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal. I am carnal. Soul. Under sin. Soul. Sold under sin. Under sin. Amen. You are sold just like a slave. That's right. Was sold on auction. That's right. Whenever one was a slave and was auctioned off, they were not auctioned off to go into freedom. That's right. They were auctioned off to go into bondage. That's right. So when you were sold, sold. into sin, Amen. you did not go into freedom. No. You went into bondage just like Israel went into Egypt. No, you're not. Eh? That's right. Don't you know? That to whom ye yield yourselves to servants to obey. ye yield your servants to obey. His servants ye are. His servants ye are. To whom ye obey. All right, so here we are now. Yeah. Struggling. That's right. That's right. God said you can't serve two masters. Mm -mm. That's why you're praying to the master. That's right. To delivering you from a master. That's right. Did you get my language? That's right. Eh? That's right. You are praying, praying. to the master mm -hmm. for deliverance Amen. from a master. That's right. The Bible says, for one mm -hmm. is your master, even Christ. Mm -hmm. But Christ is your master when you obey and serve him. That's right. Do you hear the Bible talking? Now in the book of St. Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 24. That's what? No man. No, oh, oh, wait a minute now. Amen. I don't care who you are, Mr. Man, That's big right. man, small man, short man, fat man, rich man, poor man. Mm -hmm. No man. No man can serve two masters. Do you hear this? In Matthew 6 and verse 24. You just can't be in a false church and then want to be in truth. Be in a false church. Be in truth. Old folks say you can't straddle the fence. That's right. You have to be in this all the way. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. No man can serve. Two masters. Why are you trying? Mm. You're lighting a cigarette and you want to go to church. Come on now. Come on. Some of you sitting right here now with a with, with a uh, with a electronic cigarette in your pocketbook, and <laughs> hey man, want to do some vaping? Some vaping. <laughs> That's right. That's hey right. Amen. Yeah, amen. So that way you don't feel like you're all the way wrong because you say, "Well, Pastor Jennings, I'm not smoking tobacco. I'm, I'm vaping. Vaping. Uh -huh, you're gonna vape right to hell. That's right." Just the same. That's right. Well, Pastor Jennings, it's not a real cigarette. What scripture would you say about that? Mm. Oh, I mm. got a whole lot of scriptures lot in of my scriptural bag. That's right. And even though it's not a real cigarette, I got a scripture that'll crush your vape. That's right. The Bible says avoid the very appearance yes. of evil. Mm. So it looked like the real thing, and you're still performing an evil act. That's right. So you got to avoid the look. That's right. Get it out your your mouth. mouth. Now vape that. Amen. <laughs> hey! Amen. Come on, son. No man can serve two masters. You thought you was doing something, didn't you? That's right. Glory to God. That's right. No man can serve two masters. Two masters. Now, another scripture says a double-minded man is unstable in how much? All his ways. The churches today have a double mind. Yeah. A double mind introduces a double standard. That's right. A devil standard want to integrate Bible <clears throat> and the devil. Yeah. And this is why churches are so weak. Their heart is divided. My, my, my. Oh, you're ready this morning. Amen. You're ready this morning. Amen. 
man. Yeah, yeah, man. You, it didn't come as a result being too close to that Christmas tree last oh, night. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no. You thought you was back home, didn't you? <laughs> Glory to God. What did he say? Give chapter and verse. In the book of Hosea, chapter 10 and at verse 2. Listen at this, brothers and sisters and viewers. Follow me in your Bible. Hosea <clears throat> chapter 10 and verse 2. All right. Their heart is divided. Their heart. Heart. Is divided. Now shall they be found faulty. Now. Amen. When you are divided, because God is not the author of confusion. That's right. When you are divided, you're unstable mm -hmm. and you're not properly balanced. Amen. You know, <clears throat> this time of year, there's a lot of potholes in the road. Yeah. And uh, I mean, if you hit one hard enough, I may uh, tear your whole axle up. That's right. But if you hit one at a reasonable speed. Mm -hmm. Later on, you'll see your wheels is out of line. Yeah. Your wheel can be straight and you may drift to the left, drift to the right. So what you do, you go to your dealer so they can fix the problem and give your wheel alignment. That's right. Because when your wheel is out of line, sometimes you can feel a wobble in your steering wheel, and if you ignore it over a period of time and then look at your tire, you can see how the tread wear down. Amen. It don't wear down evenly. Amen. Brothers and sisters, when you have a double-minded or confused Amen. or unstable, mm -hmm. you need to come to the body shop. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. What is the body shop? The church. Amen. And uh, you must be hooked up to scripture. Yeah. They give you a spiritual alignment. That's right. So you can travel on this holy journey okay. the right way. That's right. Now, anytime you have a belief, and I want you to hear me well, a belief that contradicts the Bible is all out there in the road of your spiritual travel. That's right. Mm -hmm. You see, when you got a woman preacher, that's a pothole. Amen. <laughs> huh? Amen. Hey Amen. You want to drink beer, that's a pothole. That's right. You want to live together, not marry, pothole. That's right. Homosexual, deep pothole. Amen. I mean, that's a very deep Amen. pothole. Amen. Amen. You're a Baptist, pothole. Amen. Methodist, Presbyterian, you believe you can divorce, pothole. Amen. So these churches are not leading you into the kingdom with a smooth journey. Amen. Because we're on the highway. Oh, yes. And the Bible says a highway shall be there yes. and a way shall be called the way of holiness. Oh, so yes. if you're on a highway that's filled with other religions, yes. there's potholes. That's right. Glory to God in your road. That's right. And I, and I know you hit those potholes because I can hear your muffler making a lot of noise. Amen. Eh? Amen. Amen. Before I came out, there was a group meeting in one of the rooms, and you would think they had more people in, the, in that room than this auditorium. Yeah. And all uh, oh, the music was going, and they just kept going. The keyboard player and the drummer, and <laughs> oh, the woman was screaming and hollering. And I told Shit, I said, You know what? I think I ought to go in there. Go in there. <laughs> What's happening? He said, you are. I said, yeah. Oh, she hollered and hollered. So, uh, hey, man, uh, I wanted to see, you know. See. What's, go what's going on? What was all the fuss about? Yeah, that's right. That's right. So I, I went in there and opened the door. It was all the women. Mm. Was a woman, a woman preacher, all the women, and one poor man banging on the drums and and uh, I, when I came in and showed my face, obviously they recognized who I was. Mm -hmm. She was screaming in the microphone, and I caught her in scream mode. <laughs> so when I opened the door and just stood there, she was yelling, ah! And then she said, ah! <laughs> <laughs> and I just looked at her and just shook my head. <laughs> I want her to see the great disgust. That's right. Because there was a pothole there. That's right. Huh? That's right. And to keep my wheels in line with the scripture, yeah. I couldn't fellowship with that. No, no. I had to get back in my car and drive on <laughs> back here to church, you that's, know. That's right. 
Brothers and sisters, when you confuse or double-minded, yeah. you lack stability. Oh, yeah. So you'll go to a Baptist church one day, Methodist church one day, a Mormon church one day, a Lutheran church one day. You do religious hopping. That's right. And then say you're serving the same God. No, you're not. No, you're not. God is one. Mm -hmm. God belief is one. Right. God belief have no flexibility whatsoever. That's right. And let us understand something. Mm -hmm. God will not make no changes to suit me or you. Amen. Eh? Amen. God, I say, I say God. Right. I'm talking about the God of heaven. Yeah. The one in the Old Testament that's called the I am, that I am. And yeah. he's called Elohim. He's called Yahweh. He's called Yah. He's called Lord God Almighty. Right. Lord God of hosts. He's called Alpha, Omega, beginning and ending. He's called uh, the Holy One, the oh. Holy One of Israel. He's called all that. That's right. But his name is Jesus. That's right. And he's the Christ. That's right. He will not alter his standard, his belief, his rules, his laws for nobody. Amen. I don't care how cute you are. God don't care and I don't. No. Now, if God start to care, perhaps he will move me to care. That's right. But God don't care how cute you believe you are, nor do I. That's right. And I know the grave don't care. Amen. I never saw no beautiful woman be buried and the grave say, she's too fine to be here and <laughs> threw her out. No. And she came out the casket. Well, I go another time. No, you won't. <laughs> oh, Glory no. Thank God. Ah! That's right. Glory be to the Father. That's right. God have one law. Amen. One rule. The objective of the straight path of holiness is to prepare you to meet the one true living God. That's right. The objective of confusion in churches and in religion yeah. is to derail you from the straight path path of God. That's right. Listen at this. Their heart is divided. Is your heart divided this afternoon? Divided. Huh? Your viewers that are watching, is your heart divided? Hmm. You look at all these Muppets on social media. That's right. They call themselves preachers, but they Muppets. Amen. What do you mean, Pastor Jennings, the Muppets are not real? That's right. Huh? That's right. You watch Kermit in the pulpit and some of you following women <laughs> preachers, Miss Piggy. <laughs> huh? Sure you do. Amen. Amen. Some of you got Ernie and Bert for deacons and bishops. And That's right. Amen. That's right. In other words, your church is just as equal to Sesame Street. Amen. You're not learning nothing godly. No. You're not learning nothing spiritual. Mm -hmm. The church is supposed to be a divine institution. Amen. In fact, it's supposed to be the greatest spiritual institution in the world. That's right. And the only textbook that is permissible. In church is the scriptures. Amen. Nothing else. Nothing else. I said, I said, nothing else, I said. That's, that's right. What did he say there? Their heart is divided. Is your heart divided? Yeah. Woman, woman, sister, are you divided? divided? Do you believe you got the calling? Mm. Did you go to some church and the preacher pulled you to the side and said, Sister Cheryl, you got the calling. And the preacher went in some type of fake spirit. Han na na janda, han na na janda, <laughs> han na na janda. And you start jumping. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Amen. All right, Sister Bogglehead Cheryl. Amen. Come on back now. You divided. Divided. And we want to get you off the path of confusion. That's right. How are you going to do that, Pastor Jennings? Mm -hmm. God never talked to no man mm -hmm. or no woman or bring no revelation to cause them to say or do anything or to go anywhere. Yeah. That contradicts his word. That's right. Eh? That's right. You see, the scriptures is our GPS system. Amen. And one thing about the scriptures, the difference between your GPS system and the car, you know, sometimes the car GPS system can take you on a scenic route. Yeah. Take you all the way around That's right. just to get to one place. That's right. The place is only cross the street. And the GPS take you all through the woods and somewhere through a cornfield and tobacco field. And all you had to do was to go across the street. That's right. Well, the scriptures don't pull you to the left no. or to the right. Amen. The scriptures either taking you, letting you know you're going up, 
Hmm. Or you're going down. That's right. And then the scriptures let you choose which way you want. Oh, yes. Hmm? Oh, yes. If you want to go to hell, God say, I give you that. That's right. If you want to be right and be saved, God say, I give you that. That's right. Until the prophets declare to us, choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. The choice is yours. Oh, yes. Dover, Delaware. And the whole state of Delaware mm -hmm. and the United, or should I say, and the divided right. states of America. <laughs> yeah. I stopped calling America the United States. They ain't united. No. Only thing America is united on is being of the devil. That's right. And that's all they're united on. That's right. They're not even united on the devil in the White House. Amen. They're divided with him. With him. Amen. And America certainly ain't united on God. No. If you was united with on God, there would not be an image in your house. You would not have an idol in your house. You would not be petting yourself, tapping your head and your stomach and both sides of your chest, bowing to a cross and kissing images. No, you wouldn't be doing none of that. No. You would be ready to surrender your mind, heart, soul, body, and spirit mm -hmm. to God's everlasting, eternal will. That's right. That, that don't work in your favor. No. Let us just understand that God's way don't work in your favor. Amen. Man, when God done with you, listen, what do you think he mean, new creature? New creature. To better understand this, but when you see a worm, mm -hmm. the worm have an appointed time that it spins its silk and form a cocoon and go in a secret place. Mm -hmm. It goes in a secret closet. Amen. Eh? Amen. Amen. And while it's in there, God dealing with him. Yeah. Why? God is the creator of the worm. That's right. And the worm sheds off its old body. Mm -hmm. But to do that, it has to go to itself. That's right. Separate from everything. Yeah. And while it's in the cocoon for a period of time, God is remaking it. Yeah. Like being born all over again. That's right. Giving it a new body. Yeah. Uh, refashioning it. Oh, yeah. And after he give it a new body, he also give it a new behavior That's right. and give it a new name. That's right. So when a cocoon bursts open, mm -hmm. don't expect the same thing that went in yeah. to come out. Oh, yeah. A worm went in. Yeah. Lord, thank God, but a worm is not coming out. That's right. The worm went in slowly. But while it's in there, being redone, yeah. remade, mm -hmm. being worked on That's right. by the creator. That's right. Then at the appointed time when this change is done, mm -hmm. the cocoon break open, yeah. a butterfly That's right. come out. That's Somebody right. said, wait a minute, a butterfly didn't go in there. That's right. right. <laughs> a butterfly didn't come in the church. Amen. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Amen. A bunch of worms yeah. came in the church. That's right. And the worm had to repent. That's right. And be baptized in That's the right. name of Jesus Christ. And then that old worm seek the Lord for the Holy Ghost. Yeah. And then God teach that worm how to shed off yeah. the old man. That's right. Slowly but surely. We go through metamorphosis, yeah. the changing of the body, the changing of the nature, the changing of the mind, the changing of the characteristics of the wicked That's right. to the righteous. That's right. Teaching transforms. Yeah. Teaching changes. Oh, yeah. And the devil's church don't give you a teaching that elevates you to be a new creature. No. It just Keeps you as a creature, a creature, but never a new creature. That's right. That's right. The holy teaching. Yeah. Give your wings. Oh, yeah. Make your mount up. Hallelujah. Go and say God. Hallelujah. Wings of an eagle. That's right. Make it run. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go right. Hallelujah. And not be worried. Make it walk. And not faint. Go and take God and not faint. That's right. Huh? That's right. So just like the caterpillar. Went in the cocoon. Come out a butterfly. Yeah. Now it's elevated in the heavens. Right. Spread its wings. Yeah. 
it can do what it used to couldn't do. Right. Fly. Right. Huh? That's right. It used to couldn't do that. Yeah. But it had to endure time yeah. and change. Mm -hmm. And for it to do that, it had to get away from all others that was like him. That's right. And it had to wait for his own personal change to come. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's why a lot of us don't change because we're still in the same religion that was started by a man, founded by a man. The man's ideology is still polluting your spiritual walk. The man's philosophy still destroying your spiritual walk. The man's way of thinking still keep you from walking this path straight. You walk the path wing footed. That's right. You take someone that got a, got a straight line, a person that's wing footed can't walk that straight line. No. Their feet going to be all over the place. Amen. Huh? Amen. And if they try to straighten their feet out, it's uncomfortable to their bone structure. Yeah. You understand? That's right. Thank God. And that's the way the word of God is straight. Oh, yeah. And narrow, narrow is the way. Yeah. And because the truth of God is a clear representation of the straight ways of God, yeah. them that are unstable. Mm -hmm. You can go to social media, brothers and sisters, and you'll find these so-called Jesus-only preachers yeah. just as unstable as they can be. That's right. And the world see them. Oh, yeah. One man wrote me and said, Pastor Dennis, I went to social media. I didn't know there were so many church organizations that had similar names to the first church of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I didn't know that. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's many that got the name Jesus. Yeah. You can have the name, but that don't make you. No. Huh? No. Listen, you can go and order online a WBC heavyweight championship belt. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can't you do it? You can go online and order a WBC World Heavyweight Champion belt and wear it. Mm. And nobody, and I mean nobody, <laughs> nobody, from the WBC <laughs> know you born. That's right. Don't know your name. That's right. You never had a match in your life. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Amen. You can go online and order a uh, UFC belt yeah. and walk around. Or throw it over your shoulder. Mm -hmm. right. Nobody from the UFC know you? No. Yeah, why? You, you ain't got no cauliflower ear, no nothing. nothing. Nose ain't bent, nothing. Nothing. Hey, and ain't never wore gloves in your life, not even a shovel snow. <laughs> Amen. So because there are many with the name, yeah. please, it don't mean nothing. No. It never did. No. Because if the doctrine and the teaching don't accompany the name, then there's no power in the name. Nor is, nor is there any legitimacy mm. in the name. That's right. Now, viewers, the devil hate mm. the truth of God. Oh, yeah. And the viewers can see yeah. that there's a great move in the earth. That's right. From the Lord. That's right. In the truth of God message. Amen. Huh? Amen. It's a tsunami everywhere it goes. Yeah. Is just dragging people. That's right. Dragging them to God. That's right. So what the devil will always try to do. Right. Always want to distract people. Mm -hmm. I remember the devil tried this so many times. Mm -hmm. Got over social media. Said Pastor Jennings was this. Pastor Jennings was that. Pastor Jennings was the other. I remember when mm -hmm. social media, false prophet, first tried to destroy my credibility. Yeah. And tried to destroy my name uh, to try to get people to leave the church. Mm -hmm. And it didn't happen. The work got larger. Amen. And when people began to read the lies that was put out on me and the church, mm -hmm. it made backsliders come back to the church. Amen. And I never forget when one particular sister came in, she came back to the church and God filled her with the Holy Ghost. Wonderful. And she said, what brought me back was because people was lying on you. Amen. The devil lied on God. That's right. And says three of them. Three of them. 
Amen. And, Amen. and said Jesus is the second person in the Godhead Amen. and said the Holy Ghost is the third person. Amen. Like I told you last night, Williams opened my uh, eyes <laughs> to an area of the Trinity that he used to believe. And I want the whole world to know <laughs> that he used, Williams used to be a Trinitarian. Amen. Just in case I got any present Trinitarians uh, here now, he used to be your brother. <laughs> Amen. And let me just say this. Well, if yeah, the Lord yeah. can deliver the likes of him, <laughs> uh, then what do you think he can do for you? Can I get an amen? <laughs> so Williams opened my understanding to something that I never heard. I mean, never heard amen. of the uh, foolish <laughs> belief of the Trinity. the Trinity. They was taught that the Holy Ghost, mm -hmm. not only was it the third person in the Godhead, mm -hmm. but the Holy Ghost was the gentleman of the Trinity. That's right. The Holy Ghost was the gentleman. And, you know, the Holy Ghost supposed to wear, you know, the, the, duck, the, the penguin tail uh, tuxedo and the top hat and cane and white gloves. And the Holy Ghost talked with the European accent. And, and the Holy Ghost was the, uh, the gentleman, the gentleman. Uh, of the Trinity. That's right. That's right. You know you Trinitarians are messed up. Amen. You know you messed up. Amen. God is not a, a God of, uh, he didn't come from Europe. No. What kind of foolishness is this? That's right. But yet, this is the thinking of men. That's right. Now, the thoughts of men, the supposition of men, the ideology of men, the philosophy of men, the theory of men, the opinions of men have infiltrated church. That's right. And the origin of many of these thoughts came right out of Europe, yeah. right out of Africa, right out of uh, all the many countries around the world. That's right. Have infiltrated into church. Amen. Until most people belief about God is a European version about God. That's right. That's right. In order for you to have the right understanding about God, you need revelation. Amen. And revelation don't come from Europe. Mm -hmm. It don't come from the north, the east, the west, or the south. The south. Revelation comes from above. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's why the apostle Paul said about God, how God revealed his son in me, mm -hmm. that I may preach him among the Gentiles. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. God got to reveal the scriptures in you, and he revealed it two ways, direct or indirect. God is revealing it now through teaching. That's right. He's making his word known now through teaching. Now the purpose of the teaching of holiness, uh, you know when you, if your water is dirty, sometimes you can buy a filter mm -hmm. and connect it to your faucet. The objective of the filter is to trap the dirt. So when you drink the water, your water is clean. Right. The objective of the word is to trap the false teaching. Mm -hmm. So when you get Taught the word, the teaching is clean. That's right. Huh? That's right. Amen. No germs, no religious bacteria, mm -hmm. no religious parasites that's in the scriptures. That's right. See, when you're in the religion of men, you're full of parasites. Yeah. That's why I see you jumping and shouting with no God. Yeah. Amen. Here you jumping up. The parasites got you doing things you shouldn't be doing. Amen. And the parasites got you saying amen to women preachers. You, you got a parasite in you. Yeah. It got your mouth jumping too quick. You see a woman preaching, parasite getting, hey, man. <laughs> That's right. Parasite got you. That's right. Amen. The preacher get up and say, when I count to three, you're going to speak in tongue. And then that parasite getting you when the preacher count one, two, three. I got back, I got back, I got back, I got back. That's a parasite. It ain't the Holy Ghost. That's right. Uh -huh. That's a parasite. Amen. It's the spirit of the devil that's in you. That's because when you truly got the Holy Ghost, it cannot be controlled by no man. When you got the Holy Ghost, listen, when the Holy Ghost getting you, I don't care if someone put a paper bag over your mouth. If the Holy Ghost got you speaking in tongue, a, pass, a, a paper bag won't Stop. shut it down. No. Hey! 
Amen. But if you in a church and there's some old raggedy Ann and Andy oh. up in the pulpit and the preacher said, when I count to three, you're going to speak in tongue. And the moment he count one, two, three, and your tongue start moving, you ain't got the Holy Ghost. No. That's a parasite in you. That's right. That's the spirit of the devil. You're moving from the devil, by the devil, mm -hmm. in the devil, for the devil, because mm -hmm. you're of the devil. That's right. And I just want you to know who you're related to. Amen. What is that? Their heart is divided. Their heart is divided. Glory to God. Glory to God. Let's look at the heart. The Bible says the heart is the most deceitful thing, and here it's desperately wicked. Now think of it. Have you ever met a desperate person? A person that's desperate knows no bound to destroy. One of you get that for me, please. A person that's desperate yeah. knows no bound to destroy you. That's right. You get a desperate person. Oh, man, they'll do anything to destroy you. Oh, yeah. Have you ever met a desperate and jealous person? Mm. In fact, in most cases, jealousy ignites desperation. That's right. You know, a person that's jealous of you, they don't love the way people respect you. No. They don't love the honor people uh, give you. They don't love the respect mm. that, and the confidence that people have for you. So eh, 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 you, you may have a husband and a wife, got a beautiful relationship, got a beautiful family. But uh, if someone is jealous, jealous. of that relationship, mm. then they're going to try to destroy it. Jealousy is cruel. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here, here, here. Now, I want this to be good for all of you jealous folks that are listening and watching the truth of God. In the book of the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, uh -huh. and at verse 6. Listen at this. Set me as a seal upon thine heart. Set me as a seal upon thine heart. As a seal upon thine arm. Uh -huh. For love is as strong as death. Love is as strong as death. Jealousy. Jealousy. Is cruel. Is cruel. As the grave. All right, let's break it down and take it apart and put you on the straight path. That's right. Jealousy cool. is, a, is someone's characteristics. Yeah. What do jealousy and a grave got in common? Mm -hmm. To better understand this, let's see what the grave do to a body. That's right. Now, you may have been beautiful, as some folks say, fine and whatever, and had many compliments and bless God and have more curves than Route 1, 95, 295, 85, and 13, and, and even your neighborhood. Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. But when you die, praise the name of God. Mm -hmm. And you lay in that ground for a period of time, mm -hmm. your beautiful hair, your beautiful teeth, those beautiful eyes, your breasts and your, and your hips, be it fake or real, mm -hmm. and your feet, your manicured nails, and all that beautiful hoopla that the funeral director put on your face. He put rouge on your face That's and, right. amen, put some lipstick on your lips and gave you fake eyelashes and he put some pencil on your forehead. Head, right. So you can pretend you have eyebrows and mm -hmm. amen. And if, and if you was a man that died, he made your cheeks a little rosy and done all what he can could to make you look presentable. But amen. bless the name of God. Amen. When you go down to the grave, the grave, he, the grave ain't down there to, to help your look improve. No. The grave make your teeth fall out. That's right. Uh, the grave pull your eyes out your socket. That's right. And then that mouth that's closed and may been stitched shut by the undertaker. Over a period of time, your mouth start come open. open. The grave and the change of atmosphere loose the thread. That's right. And your mouth drop wider and wider until your mouth drop open, making it like an open door for insects and moles and rats. Amen. Then your flesh start to burst open and That's right. maggot. Amen. The breasts that men used to enjoy, now they burst open, mm -hmm. exposing the silicon. That's right. Uh -huh. And then that explodes. That explodes. Amen. But then the rats mm -hmm. and the grave insects tear up your flesh Go ahead. and eat up the rubber. Right. Amen. Take away your curves and take away Go that ahead. manicured look and get rid of your paint. Bless mm -hmm. God. And, and now you're ugly. Ugly. All the perfume that they gave your body, yeah. down your body stink. That's, right. That's what the Bible says. Instead of sweet smell, glory to God, it shall be stink. That's right. Now, yeah. just like the grave disfigure your body yeah. and change your body look mm -hmm. and change your body scent. 
When you was living, people came to you. When you was living, people compliment you. When you was li living, people wanted to be around you. When you was living, they whistled at you. When you was living, they bumped their horn. When they whistled at you, when they looked at you when you was living, they turned around and almost crashed. That's true. Now, now. they don't want to see you. Mm -hmm. You smell different. Yeah. You look different. Oh, yeah. You're ugly now. That's right. Why? The grave done it. That's right. Jealousy is as cruel as the grave. As the grave. So a jealous person mm -hmm. have the same characteristics as the grave. As the, grave. the change that, a, that the grave take your body through yeah. until nobody don't even want to accept this is you. That's right. They can't accept the change. That's right. They can't accept the damage. Mm -hmm. They can't take the aroma because the stench is so great. Yeah. Your eyes fall out. Your mouth fall out. Those straight teeth is all jacked up until they fall out your head. That's right. The grave done it. Right. A jealous person have the characteristics of the grave. Yeah. In other words, they want to change the way people look at you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to change the way people view you. That's true. They want to change the way people feel about you. Right. you I don't care about your loved one. My father been dead. It'll be 29 years. Mm. He was a handsome man. Yeah. Indian, Cherokee. Hey man, had that old red look and my thick, bushy eyebrows. His eyebrows look like he had two mustaches over his eyes. Amen. Huh? Amen. Thick eyebrows and cold, black, Indian straight hair with all that silver in it. Yeah. Stay clean. Oh, yeah. Amen. But he's been dead 29 years. Mm -hmm. And if you dig him back up, they're going to be a change. That's right. Huh? That's hey man, right. he won't look too kosher. No. Why? The grave changed him. Mm -hmm. Just like the grave changed him. People who are jealous have the characteristics of the grave. And bear in mind, a grave is a place of dirt. So therefore, the jealous one is a dirty-minded human being. That's right. To have a dirty character. That's and right. just like within the grave is full of all parasites and unclean things that's designed to damage the body, the jealous person is a living parasite. Oh, yeah. And their characteristics is to damage the way you look in the eyes of people. That's, that's right. That's why he or she will say anything and do anything to destroy your look, to destroy your character, yeah. to destroy the way people perceive you That's so right. they can glory in it. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. Do you hear what the Holy Ghost said? Jealousy is cruel. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Mm, 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 Amen. Mm. Do you hear it? Jealousy Do you is get true. the revelation of it? Amen. You better give chapter and verse again. That was the book of the Song of Solomon, chapter 8. The Song eight. of Solomon, chapter 8. And at verse 6. I don't care how beautiful a person is. You know, back in the 1920s, I believe they call him a heartthrob. Mm -hmm. Heartthrob during a silent movie era. There was a fella named Don Juan. Don Juan. All oh, men, women will faint and fall <laughs> out like fa'oos <laughs> over Don Juan. Oh, Don Juan dead. <laughs> That's right. Mm, Don Juan, he, he dead. He dead. Yeah, he dead. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and he's silent now forever. Yeah. Amen. Until the Lord call him out the ground. That's but right. if you go dig Don Juan up, he won't look the way he look on the screen. No. Look at it, brothers and sisters. All these so-called beautiful and handsome actors and actors that people will break their neck to get autographs and fall over and paparazzi will travel and follow them all over the place and here they're dead and when you pull that corpse out from the ground or out of that vault they're not the same they don't smell the same that's they don't right. look the same and that's the way it, now bear in mind you bear in mind mm -hmm. before the body go into the ground it goes into the freezer that's right, yeah. that's and, right. it goes into a freezer first yeah. that's also like a jealous person oh, yeah. because he's cold oh yeah they can do whatever they gotta got a mind to do right. he can say anything she can do anything ahead, but they're so cold why what the oh. neck with each other oh, about God. that's right <laughs> Ah, love of many. With iniquity. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell them Love of many shall wax the cold. The love of many shall wax cold. cold. They are so cold in their behavior, it don't phase them what they say about you. That's it right. don't phase them what they do to you. It don't phase them. But when the hand of God step in, God yeah. will make, uh, make everything work 
in the favor of the one whom the wicked is trying to destroy. That's right. That's what the Lord say. I make your enemies your footstool. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Hallelujah. Everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's what the devil, that's what God done with the truth of God. That's right. Everything that every man and every woman got together and tried to, do, tried to do, it worked in favor yeah. of the church. That's right. Yeah, I know it, it, it done it every, every single time. time. Amen. Amen. I remember a woman we disfellowship out of our Newport News Church. Amen. Amen. And she got so angry, she put together a letter and sent it to a false prophet in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I laughed about it. Oh. Amen. I, I laughed about it. And she, amen, she tried to destroy many names of Newport News. Mm -hmm. but, I, but, but being that I'm the overseer and God made choice among us right. and gave me the gospel to bring to the world, mm -hmm. I'm always the, the big target. That's right. and they were always targeting Pastor Jen. Always. always. They were targeting Pastor Jen more than they target anybody. That's right. And I love it when that happened because my boss, mm -hmm. he always works it Amen. in my favor. Amen. Huh? Hallelujah. Every time. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Every time. He always works it Wonderful. in the, f I never known it to fail. Wonderful. Amen. I never known it to fail. That's why sometime I had a man call me, I think last week or two weeks ago. I don't know how he got my number. Hmm. You know, out of courtesy, you know, when you call someone, you may say, hello, and uh, how are you? My name is Mr. or, or Mrs. Something. Mm -hmm. Amen. He called me. I was, uh, I had to get my car service. I was in a gas station. He called me. Eugene Jennings. Hmm. Why, you called me. <laughs> huh? And I'm like, uh, who's this? He wouldn't even tell me who he was. And he just started questioning me and then said, well, you know, there's a preacher on social media. I said, wait, 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 wait. I said, listen, I don't care what he's saying. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm not even interested. Mm -hmm. He said, say what? I said, I'm not interested. I'm busy. Amen. We see these men talking about the truth of God. They don't have no work. No. They don't have no work. You take a person who's a tailor and someone can only crochet a booty for a child, they may get jealous at the tailor. That's right. God made me a tailor preacher. That's right. Eh? That's right. God made us a tailor preacher and the people are coming. coming. So this is what the devil loved to do and want to do. He's mad of the viewers that's coming, the black and white and yellow and brown and red coming from America, Canada, South America. Africa, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, from all around the world coming, coming. like wildebeest rolling through Africa. That's right. And when wildebeest come through Africa, there's alligators waiting. Waiting. Like false prophets. That's right. Amen. The false prophets see you making your trail That's right. from the four corners of the earth. Amen. And they're just sitting from state to state, country to country, like alligators. That's right. Waiting, but sometimes you see a strong zebra kick, kicking. Yeah. That's right. And then the alligator got to back off. That's right. You get what I'm telling you? That's right. That's where this gospel is. Amen. It kicks them. Amen. Make them close their mouth. That's right. Amen. So I want to say to all my fighters, Wonderful. please, I want to encourage you. Dig deep. Amen. Dig deep now. Amen. I want you to fight hard, fight strong. That's right. Please make it convincing. Right. convincing right. Because the harder you fight, Fight, the more sweeter God is to the first church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Why? God have it like this. That's right. Amen. The devil will never give up. I don't expect for him to give up. No. Sometimes preachers, because of the popularity of the message of the truth of God, mm -hmm. what you have find, what a lot of preachers start to do, they start to insert their program yeah. in hours. Mm -hmm. They start to insert theirs in ours. Mm -hmm. Amen. But I'm so glad because of the distinction of the message, mm -hmm. you can't get nothing no. mixed up with the truth of God message. No, no. You just can't get nothing mixed up. It's so wonderful. That's right. It's so powerful, so great, so strong. Amen. Amen. Until it's breaking down everything under the sun. That's right. What did he say? Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Have you ever met? Have you ever met? Now, listen, don't look at this from a female perspective. No. My God, man, you got some men that's, man. they jealous they exceed a woman. That's true. Huh? That's I mean, true. exceed a woman. There are preachers out there now. Their, their, their jealousy, jealousy is in them deeper than some cancer in people's bones. That's true. 
Because they have no work. They have no work whatsoever. That's right. Whatsoever. That's, right. That's why God has made me a focus preacher. Mm -hmm. I get thousands of emails. Pastor Jennings, don't worry about what people say to you. Let me say to you that I write this. I, I thank you for your email. Mm -hmm. But really, I don't. Mm -hmm. I'm very focused. Just ask those that travel with me right. and been around me for a while. Amen. I'm extremely, extremely focused. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Why? Because there's nothing out here that's fit to be distracted over. That's right. I'm focused. Here you have thousands Wonderful. coming to this one message, and I'm focused to lead the people mm -hmm. into green pasture. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Jealousy. Jealousy is cruel as All right, let's go back to where we were now. You better go back to where we were. I want to get all of this. Back in Romans chapter 7 and verse 23. Listen. But I see another law in I my members. I see another member, law in my members. Warring. And a conflict. Against the law of my mind. Do you hear that? Can you identify with it? Oh, yes. Why everything in here might as well say amen. Oh, yes. There's something in you no. that's still not dead. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, yes, it is. I don't care how old you are. If you're eight, listen, if you're 800 years old, I guarantee there's something in you that's, that's not dead. That's right. That's and right. it is at a conflict now. The mm. conflict begins the moment you get in mind to obey God. Yeah. Because there's a law in your mind mm. that's in conflict with the law of your body. That's right. You're, the nature of your body is to do evil. Mm -hmm. The nature of your body is to do wicked. Yeah. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, being that it is a war, you're going to win some and lose some. Lose some. That's right. I want you, I guess want to prepare you. That's true. Yeah, you, you might as well get prepared. That's right. You're going to win some and lose some. I find ahead. And mm -hmm. if you lose some, that don't mean God ain't with you. Amen. Well, Pastor Jennings says, God is with me. Why would I lose some? This is God. Listen, God says, mm -hmm. let the brother of low degree rejoice that he's exalted. Yeah. If you always up there, how can that scripture be fulfilled in your life? That's right. The prophet said, rejoice not, my enemies, for when I fall, I shall rise. If you never fall, how do you know what it feels like to experience the hand of God to pick you up? That's right. That's right. You that are spiritually immature mm. and overzealous, the way you think, you say, well, I never want to make mistakes. I never want to fall. Oh, really? You bigger than Adam. Amen. The first man fell. fell. That's right. Why you think the world is in the situation it's in? That's right. Well, Apostle Jennings, I don't read what none of the apostles done wrong. You don't? You don't. Let's, let's, let's go to the Bible. Mm -hmm. You better give me the second chapter of Galatia, Galatia first. first. I want to show you that uh, Peter and them that came from James and Barnabas. Mm -hmm. Amen. All three of them got messed up. That's right. All right. In the book of Galatians chapter 2, we'll start at verse 11. Follow me. Galatians chapter 2 at verse 11. This is, this is after the Lord moved on brother Paul. God moved on Paul and gave him a revelation to go up after 14 years. Here's Paul went out there preaching mm -hmm. by God's permission. 14 years out there in the field laboring hard. I mean, God just giving him victory, every country, every town, everywhere, right. baptizing the folks in the name of Jesus Christ. And they were receiving the Holy Ghost and signs and wonders was done by the power of God and the apostle. But God stopped them and gave them a revelation to go up and communicate to them that was in reputation. Go up and communicate with them that had the gospel before I gave it to you. Yeah. You go to talk to them that was in reputation, who was Peter, James and John. Right. And then, because remember, when God made Paul an apostle, the apostles did not accept them. No. The apostles would not accept him. No. The apostles wouldn't even hear him. Mm -hmm. The first one that agreed to uh, accept him and hear him and listen to him and accept him as a brother was Barnabas. Barnabas. Amen. And now uh, when Barnabas began to let the other apostles know that the same one that, that persecuted the church, he's praying now. Right. He's one of us now. Mm -hmm. He's walking with the truth of the gospel. Now, they still didn't still. want to have anything to do with Paul. Right. But my God, a revelation came down from heaven and hit the Apostle Paul, you done been out here 14 years. Yes. Now you got to come on and connect yourself with the church. Right. You got to connect yourself with the men that walk with Jesus in the flesh mm -hmm. and talk with Jesus in the flesh mm -hmm. and handle Jesus in the flesh. You wasn't around when Jesus was in the flesh, so I revealed Jesus to you in the spirit. And you could preach him like it was in the flesh. That's right. Ah! That's right. Glory to God and Paul went on up, thank mm -hmm. God, by revelation yeah. and communicate with 
them that was in reputation. What you mean them that was in reputation? Them that had the greatest reputation among the people uh, was Peter, James, and John. Right. And bless God when Paul talked to them. Mm -hmm. Listen at this. In the book of Come Genesis, on, son, chapter quick. 2 and at verse 8. Uh -huh. For he that wrought effectually, that wrought Peter effectually in Peter towards what? The apostleship of the circumcision. Of the, circumcision. the same was the mine same me work in me Gentiles. towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, when James, and John, Cephas which is Peter and John, who seemed to be, pillars, seemed to be steadfast, perceived the grace that was given they unto me. They saw the grace that was given unto me. They gave to me and bond with the right hands of fellowship. That we should go unto the heathen. That we should go to heathens. And they unto the circumcision. Now you bear in mind, here's God made an apostle. Mm -hmm. And Peter, James, and John gave them the right hands of fellowship, which showed that they were in agreement with what he had. That's right. But here you had Peter, yeah. Barnabas, Barnabas, and them that came from James mm -hmm. got caught up mm -hmm. in sin. But when Peter give was chapter and verse in Galatians chapter two at verse eleven, read quick. But when Peter was come to Antioch, when Peter came to Antioch, I withstood him to the face. Wait a minute, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. Mm. You bear in mind, he didn't jump on Peter about nothing about the past. No. He jumped on Peter about his present. That's right. Because this was going on right now. That's right. He was to be blamed. But for before that certain came from certain James. Certain came from James. He didn't eat with the Gentiles. He ate with the Gentiles. But when they were come. Wait a minute. Read this again. I want to focus closely. For before that certain came from James. Certain came from James. He did eat with Who the Gentiles. Who was the certain that came from James? Jews. Mm -hmm. Because Peter was a Jew. That's right. Peter was eating with some other ethnic groups, some Gentiles. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But when they were come. Uh-oh, when the Jews came. He withdrew and separated himself. Look at, look at Peter, an apostle. Walk with Jesus. That's right. And you bear in mind, Peter knew the teaching mm -hmm. that God made everybody want. Right. But here he come along. The devil got in him. But when they were come. I want to say the devil got in him. Yes. Well, you, the book of John say he that sinneth is of the devil. Of the devil. Huh? That's and right. The Bible didn't put an exemption. No. So I want to say he was an apostle. He ain't bigger than the book. That's right. I don't That's care right. if you was an apostle, you ain't bigger than the book. That's right. That the Bible says he that sinneth, you're of the devil. That goes for me too. That's right. If I sin, I'm of the devil. Right. At the time I sin, I'm of the devil at that time. Right. And for me to get released from the devil, I have to repent and correct that wrong. That's right. Ah! That's right. Otherwise, in that, if you get wrong, you are the devil. Of the devil. All right, brother devil, sister devil, mother devil, elder devil, bishop devil, evangelist devil, deacon devil. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. The Bible speaks plain. He that sinneth of is of the devil. Not a little sin, not a, just sin. I don't sin. care what it is. Mm -hmm. You're of the devil. And when you honest enough and call a spade like that, God of heaven will be with you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. For before that certain came from James, certain that came from James, he did eat with he the Gentiles. Ate with the Gentiles. But when they were come, when they came, he withdrew and separated, he separated himself, himself, fearing them. Wait a minute, he feared them, which were of the circumcision, that were Jews, and the other Jews dissembled likewise with him. And the Jews got carried away with his actions and done the same thing. In so much, look at here, in so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. Wait, a minute, these were apostles. That's right. Even Barnabas got taken over by it. Mm -hmm. The devil used Barnabas. Barnabas. And uh -huh. the devil used Apostle Barnabas. That's right. Uh -huh. In so much that Barnabas also was carried away with their dissimulation. What else? But when I saw. Uh oh, when I saw. That they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel. When you don't walk upright, when you don't walk upright, mm -hmm. when your deeds is not right. Right, right. Who's using you, God or the devil? The devil. Hey. Amen. When I saw, when I saw that they walked not uprightly according, they didn't to, walk the up right the according gospel, to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all. I said to Peter before everybody, if thou being a Jew, you being a Jew, livest after the man of, of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews. He's reprimanding an apostle, reprimanding an apostle. That's right. Uh -huh. Why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? So here you had the word of God correcting, correcting. brother Peter, mm -hmm. Barnabas. And those that came from James. All right, let's go back to where we were. Everybody all right? I want everybody to look at the conflict. Back Listen. In, back in Romans 7 and verse 23. Uh -huh. But I see another law in my members. Warring so against. So that, that means you can't afford to look down on nobody. That's true. You out there watching me around the world, hear me preach against sin and wickedness. You think I look down on you? No, I don't. Oh, no. I got a charge to keep. 
That's right. My job is to preach. The Bible says preach the word. Preach the word. And then it says be instant in season and out of season. Yeah. The Bible says cry loud and Amen. spare not, Amen. not and lift up your voice as a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. sins. The Bible ain't telling me worrying about what you like or what you don't like. No. The Bible says preach the word. And I have to say like Paul, this will I do if God permit. That's right. And I see another law in my members. I see another law in my members. Warring. It's in conflict. Against the law of my mind. So here you got that brother baptized in the name of Jesus Christ oh. and still lighting up a cigarette. Mm -hmm. but his body's still yearning for that nicotine. That's right. His mind is in conflict with the actions of his body because his mind is being taught. Cleanse yourself from all filthiness of the flesh. Yeah. Now someone said, Pastor Jennings, how can somebody with the Holy Ghost sin? sin. When the Bible says if a person got the seed in them, yeah. they can't do wrong. Give me the epistle of John. Mm -hmm. And I want to break that down, you know, Amen. because here you got preachers telling me they got the Holy Ghost and they never done wrong. And you got women preachers, you liar. <laughs> I remember years ago I was in Florence, South Carolina, and the church was jam packed. And there were some people came there, a mixed group, black and white and whatnot. And they came, they were followers of a man that died named William Branham. Yeah. And they called themselves Branhamites. Mm -hmm. And I asked the question, who in here is perfect? And if the Lord come, uh, you'll you go back right now. All the Branham, Branhamites raised their hand, including the pastor. I said, all of you that got your hand up, you're liars. Amen. You're liars. I, I, didn't, I didn't know them. And uh, I told the preacher, you a liar. You won't get in with that long hair. The Bible says it's a shame for a man to have long hair. You got long hair. You ain't going into the kingdom. No. He looked. I said, you women, none of you even have your head covered. So you dishonor the man and you dishonor God. Mm -hmm. You on your way to hell too. Put your hand down. <laughs> huh? I shot that stuff to pieces. <laughs> it ain't nobody ready to go back with God. Listen, God said something very clear. He going to present to himself a glorious church not having a spot. The reason why he haven't came yet because the spots haven't yet been removed. That's right. That's why the word of God is a spot remover. That's right. Amen. He, he don't want the church have a spot. Then he said, no wrinkle. When there's a wrinkle, your material is out of place. Yeah. Is there something in your life or in your mind or in your heart that's out of place? Is your spirit out of place? Yes. Or is it in tune 100% oh, yeah. with God everlasting word? That's right. Not having a spot or wrinkle. Then he said, no, any such thing. Are there things that's in you that nobody know about but you and your Lord? Lord. That's right. That means you're not ready. You're not ready. Thank God for the word of God. Amen. The word of God is here to clean up creation. Oh, yes. Ah, Amen. And to clean you up. Oh, yes. Oh, and take God. Hallelujah. Amen. And give you an inheritance. Bless God among them that are sanctified. That's right. Do you hear? First John chapter three and we're at verse nine. Let's open this up now. Whosoever is born of God. Whoever is born of God. Doeth not commit sin. Do not commit sin. For his seed. His seed remaineth in him. Remain in him. And he cannot sin. He cannot sin. Because he is born of God. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Whosoever. If God say do something mm -hmm. and I disobey it, yeah. did I sin? Amen. I was debating a Sunni Muslim in Jamaica. And he said, a, a man of God can't sin mm. because God is in him. Mm. You see, if God is in him, he can't sin. can't sin. And I got the scripture where Moses, God told Moses to speak to the rock. Yeah. And Moses did opposite. Right. He smoked the rock. Mm -hmm. I said, did he do what God said do? He said, no. I asked him, if you do something that God say not do, are you wrong? He said, yes. I said, was God with Moses? He said, yes. I said, did Moses sin? Right. He that committed sin is of the devil. And 1 John 3 and at verse 8. You see, the problem with us, we look at the prophets and look at the apostles as being above what's written. That's right. And then the apostle Paul, by the Holy Ghost, knew the mentality of the people. That's right. So God moved on Paul and told Paul, you tell the people mm -hmm. not to think no higher than they ought to think, ought to think. but think soberly. That's and right. not to even think of you above that which is written. That's until right. Paul said, I must bring myself under subjection unless I be cast away. That's right. Huh? That's right. What did he say? Whosoever is born of God. Whoever. 
is born of God. Doeth not commit sin. All right, speed limit 55. Mm. You get a ticket. Did you sin? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Speed limit 55. We do 60. Mm. Speed limit say 55. <laughs> Amen. Someone say, oh, now, Pastor Jenny, you're getting ridiculous. I didn't write the speed limit. <laughs> right. what, you, what you're talking, I didn't put the speed limit in me. I, I get rid of it. Don't put it on me. <laughs> I travel around the world. Some areas I see uh, 70. That's right. There's an area in Germany, I forgot the name of the bridge. There's no speed limit. Autobahn. I think they call it the Autobahn. Autobahn. There's no speed limit. Everybody just, shoo, gone. Oh. Amen. Amen. I sinned many times. That's why I had many tickets. <laughs> Sometimes I, I don't even know they caught me until I get a letter in, in the mail. Here's a picture of my license plate. And I'm looking. <laughs> Ain't no need to fuss with the officer when you know you was going fast. You, you know, sometimes if you got a heavy car, you may not know. Yeah. Because the weight of your car, man, you just like you're gliding. Mm -hmm. But sometimes our car is not that heavy. When we go a certain speed limit, our car starts shaking. The car is telling you, I can't take the limits. The car is telling you, I can't take the limits. That's right. The car is letting you know, I ain't made for this. <laughs> Slow down, I said. That's right. Hallelujah to God. That's right. Amen. Listen at the Bible now. Whosoever is born of God. Whoever is born of God. Who has not commit sin. All right, let's break this down. Break it down. Because for his seed remaineth Holy. in him. The seed is where? Remaineth in him. Now, mm. there's, you can put a seed in the ground, mm -hmm. but the seed is not rooted yet. That's right. The word can be placed in you, yeah. but it takes time for your body to evolve yeah. around the word that's in you. That's right. Takes time. Because oh, yeah. here you had a man that was an apostle. apostle. And he made it plain that they did not walk upright. According to the truth of the gospel. And he was an apostle. That's right. That's right. Look at Peter. Mm -hmm. He was with the Messiah. And tried to rebuke him. That's right. Wait a minute. What are you thinking? To rebuke Jesus. And he spake that saying openly. Listen at this. In the book of St. Mark chapter 8 and we're at verse 32. I want you to follow me in right. your Bible. At you see, this is what I mean by making the Bible harmonize. Right. Give chapter and verse. In the book of St. Mark chapter 8, we'll start at verse 31. Uh -huh. And he began to teach them. He began to teach That them. the Son of Man must suffer many things. Yeah. And now, he, Jesus mm -hmm. told him, the Son of Man got a lot to endure. He got a lot to go through. That's right. He's going to suffer a whole lot of things. And be rejected of the elders. He's going to be rejected of the elders. And of the chief priests and, of the and chief scribes. And the chief priests and scribes. And be killed. And he's going to be killed. And after three days rise again. All right. And he spake that saying openly. Now, he was bringing this openly. It wasn't no private discussion. Mm -hmm. It was open so they can hear. And Peter took him. Peter took Jesus. And began to rebuke him. <laughs> Amen. Hmm. <laughs> Say what? Peter took him and began. Peter took Jesus and began and to lay him. Jesus out. Amen. He got some nerve. Got some nerve. Now listen. But when he and he was an out. apostle. That's right. You walking with Jesus. <laughs> That's right. You walking with the manifestation of God in flesh. In the flesh. And now you gonna lay Jesus out? Peter took him. Your teacher. Peter took him. And began to rebuke him. And laid him out. But when he turned about. When he turned about. And looked on his disciples. And looked on his disciples. He rebuked Peter. He, Jesus switched it up. That's right. Who you talking to? That's right. Who you think you talking to? Amen. Peter, stay in your place. Mm -hmm. Then what? Saying. What, what did Jesus say to Apostle Peter? Get thee behind me, Satan. <laughs> Amen. Was Jesus planting the seed in him? Amen. Was Jesus planting the seed in Peter? Yes, he was. Was not Jesus planting the seed in Peter? That's right. That's right. 
He rebuked Peter. But the seed had to abide. abide. What do you mean? When it abide, it has to stay there for a length of time so he can evolve around the lessons that's in him. That's right. That's right. That's right. The longer a seed stay in the ground, let's elaborate on the seed abiding. Abiding. You see, we just don't read the Bible. I love to break it down. Yeah. The longer a seed stay in the earth, yeah. the stronger the plant is that comes from the seed and the deeper the roots are. That's right. That's right. Now, if I just plant the seed mm -hmm. and come back a few weeks later and there's a little tender green stalk, it have not abided long enough. Is in the earth, yeah. but it have not abide long enough mm -hmm. because anybody can come snatch it out the ground. That's right. That's right. That's right. It have roots, yeah. but it's not rooted. rooted. Now do you get what I'm telling you? That's right. Go back to what did John say again? Back in 1 John 3 and verse 9. I want you to get the language of the Bible. Whosoever is born of God. Whoever is born of God. Doeth not commit doeth sin. Doeth not commit sin. For his seed. His seed. Remain. Remain. In him. Remain. 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 The same seed. No mixture. That's right. No crossbreed of seed. That's right. What do you mean no crossbreed? No crossbreed. If God's word is in you, a crossbreed is when you're trying to mix another faith, another religion mm. with the original seed. That's right. And trying to produce a hybrid religion. That's right. Go ahead. Man. Glory to God. Glory to God. Go ahead. You're trying to produce a hybrid religion. Amen. A hybrid religion is Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, Lutheran. They take the Bible, which is the seed of truth, and all these men that founded their religion have integrated their own ideology and try to mix it with the Bible and created a hybrid. That's right. That's right. Besides being authentic, yeah. holy. Mm. They have a mixture of seeds. That's right. They mix scripture with personal feelings. Yeah. They mix scripture with philosophy. They mix scripture with ideology. They mix scripture with opinion. And as a result, a hybrid religion come out. Yeah. A hybrid religion is part truth, part lie. Part lies. It's the satanic tongue religion. That's right. That's right. If you know a serpent, the tongue of a serpent is split at the end. Yeah. Showing you he's a master in divisiveness. Mm -hmm. But within the serpent, the tongue is one. Yeah. He knows it's one God, he tell you it's three. That's right. He knows it's one God, he tell you it's none. Yeah. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Whosoever is born of God. Do if not. Doeth not commit sin. Why? For his seed remaineth in him. So that seed got to remain in you. Remain in so you can sprout. So the word that's in you can cause you to sprout up and get stronger. That's right. Stronger. 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 And the stronger you become, the greater you can abstain. That's right. That's right. Because any plant that grows bigger, it grows two ways. Mm -hmm. Not only is it going up. The roots is going down. down. Why is the roots growing down? Because as bigger as the plant get, the roots form anchor. Yeah. The roots is the anchor of the plant. That's right. Why? Because the plant, the roots got to be able to hold the weight. Because when that tree spread out, not only is the tree going to form branches and leaves, but other things going to lodge on the tree. Yeah. So therefore, the roots not only go down, but they got to go down and then spread to form an anchor. So when the wind comes and goes to the left, roots already went there. Go ahead. To bring balance. Go ahead.
When the wind come and go to the right, roots already shot there go ahead. to bring balance. That's why you find a tree that's good and rooted and it blows here and there. Everywhere it lean, the roots is all over. That's right. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Are you getting it, Frank? Wonderful. Wonderful. Why? The seed abides. Abide. That's right. But it got to abide for a long period of time. That's right. That's right. Until you begin to master mm. the life of Jesus. That's it. And when you master the life of Jesus, when the book says you don't sin, don't sin. that means you have measured up to all the expectations of the teaching of Jesus. Wonderful. And that's not going to happen because you're being taught overnight. Right. That's got to happen over a period of time of constantly being taught so the seed can get planted. Now, you bear in mind another thing about a seed. The seed never stay in one spot. Mm. You plant it in the ground. Yeah. But when it rains and snow, the change of atmosphere pushes the seed that's true. deeper, deeper. Deeper, That's right. deeper, deeper. Amen. The longer the word of God is in you and you in it, yes. you must get deeper. The deeper the word get in you, the more your roots can spread and sprout and the stronger you are. That's right. Glory to God as a result of the planting. That's it. Hallelujah. Now, Hallelujah. the plant must be nourished. If the plant is not nourished, it'll die. Yeah. Jesus said, those plants that my heavenly father have not planted mm -hmm. shall be rooted up. Rooted up. That's right. How important is being a plant, Pastor Jennings? Give me the 15th chapter of the book of John. John. Mm -hmm. yeah. I want to balance this balance out now. Out. That's right. Then we go back to the epistle of John. St. John, Saint chapter, John 15. chapter 15. Chapter 15, verse, verse 1. 1. I am the true vine. I am. Here's Jesus letting you know I'm a plant also. That's right. Hey Amen. Before he was called a vine, he was called a seed. Yeah. Seed of David. That's right. One scripture said the seed of a woman shall bruise the serpent head. That's right. How did the seed get there? The Bible said we have one husband man. A husband man is a, is a farmer. Yeah. He's a planter of seed. Mm -hmm. The eternal God planted that seed in the house of David, and that seed was called son of God, son of man, prophet, apostle, minister, messenger. Yeah. And it had to be nurtured. You see how God was nurturing that seed? That's right. He said, I, hey, look at the son of man. Mm -hmm. I do always those things that please him. Yeah. That body of flesh and blood, the Son of God, always doing those things to please its creator, its father, its Lord, the outer man, pleasing the inner man. That's right. The natural life, mm -hmm. pleasing the spiritual life. That's right. Huh? That's right. Come on, Sam. I am the true vine. I am. Not just a vine. True vine. What is the nature of a vine? Spread and choke. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't care how beautiful your flower bed is. A vine start growing. Mm -hmm. It'll kill everything that's there. Yeah. And that's what God does. All these vines that grew out here, the true vine come. The true vine. And choke every false religion in the world. That's right. Choke it. That's right. Kill it. Mm -hmm. I don't care how beautiful and red it is. <laughs> how yellow and pink the flower garden is. Oh, yeah. They're fake plants. Mm -hmm. And he come along and choke everything. That's right. Uh -huh. I am the true vine. And my father. Is the husband man. Right then that's that admission that the spirit is responsible for the arrival of the son. That's right. My father is a husband man meaning I didn't come on my own. Mm. My father is a husband man. Husbandry is farming. Farming is planting. Yeah. And the Bible said in the 53rd chapter of Isaiah, talk about the coming of Jesus, say he shall be a root out of dry ground. But how did he get in the ground to begin with? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 It said he shall be a root out of dry wow. ground. How did he get in the ground to begin with? That's right. The ground is natural. The ground is not heavenly. Mm -hmm. The one that put him there is heavenly. That's right. 
Who was the dry ground? What was the dry ground? The body of Mary. Yeah. Where was the body of Mary located? In the house of David. Mm -hmm. eh? Amen. The body of Mary was in the uh, was of the house of David. The house of David. Come off out the tribe of Judah. Yeah. When he came forth out the womb until Paul saw it and said, it is quite evident yeah. that our Lord sprang out of Judah. That's right. Didn't it? Amen. Jacob said, but thou Bethlehem, or rather Judah, thou art he, whom thine brethren go and praise. Thine hand shall be in the neck of thine enemy. Thy father's children shall bow down before thee. Judah is a lion's whip from the prey, my son, you're going up. You stoop down as a lion, you couch as a no lion. Who shall rise him up? The scepter, meaning the authority or the power, shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. Until Shiloh coming unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Jacob saw how great Jesus would be. He said, binding his foe to the vine. To the vine. Binding his foe to the vine. Uh -huh. What is the fold? The people. For Jesus said, other sheep that I have that is not of this fold. Binding the fold to the vine. Now the fold will have to be come to the vine. What else does the vine do? Not only does it choke, but it covers. So when they come to Jesus, he'll cover you. That's right. Huh? Binding his fold to the vine. Hallelujah to God. And his ass is coat to the choice, choice vine. Choice, yeah. He was a choice vine. Yeah. And he was the true vine. Right. And the spirit or the father was the husband man. That's right. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. What did John the Apostle say there in the 15th chapter? Of St. John. I am. I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Every branch in me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, I said. Every branch in me. That's you. That's right. Every branch in me. That bears not fruit. That's not productive. He taketh away. Why are you called a branch? Because Jesus is the tree of life. That's right. And branches stem from a tree. That's right. And in order for a branch to live, the tree got to have nurturing power. That's right. The branch is not stronger than the tree. No. The church is not stronger than God. That's right. The branch is connected to the tree and the branch come from the tree. That's the right. The church come from God. Amen. The church come from God. Oh, yeah. What do you mean come from God? When they pressed him in his side, out came blood and water. The elements of the baptism came from the Son of Man. That's right. Blood and water came out. Mm -hmm. And then he yelled up the ghost. The Holy Ghost came out of him and his natural spirit came out of him. That's right. Listen. Every branch in me that bears not fruit. All right. He if takes you're not productive, away. If you're not productive, you preachers that's worrying about the truth of God and you're jealous over the thousands being baptized and churches are opening up all around the world and you're upset and you keep trying to get people to turn away. You put on a fake preacher uniform like a cop and tell them folk to go another way trying to direct traffic. That's all right. out there blowing Pastor Jennings is false. Come on, please go another way. Go another <laughs> way. Hit all these wildebeests. Just keep coming. Keep coming. <laughs> huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. God. That's right. Ah! Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And the wildebeest just keep coming. Keep coming. What is that? Every branch in me that Every bears branch not fruit. In me. That bears not fruit. That bears not what? He, fruit. Hold it right there. Give me the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter, five. chapter 5. Let me show you what the fruits are that you got to produce. That's right. This is what I mean by breaking down the scripture. We just don't want to read it. That's the right. Bible says every branch in me that, that beareth, beareth not, fruit, not fruit, he going to get rid of it. In Galatians now I five. want to show you what fruit that must that you must produce. In Galatians 5 and verse 22. Listen. But the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Amen. The fruit. Listen. Fruit come about as a result of that which is in, that, that which is planted. That's right. The fruit of the spirit or the results of the of spirit God is love. Is love. Joy. Some folks say I don't have love because I don't sound like them. I don't want to sound like you. That's right. I want to sound like the Holy Ghost. That's right. The Holy Ghost says not you that speaketh, but the voice of my Father that speaketh in you. Why, how do you think these souls are coming? Yeah. Not by Pastor Jennings. No. Jesus said, 
My father got to draw them. That's right. Amen. These folks are being drawn to the truth of God by the husband man. Amen. God had placed the, the truth of God in the earth mm -hmm. to draw the world to him. That's right. This is the message for the last days. Be holy. That's it. What is that? But the fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit. Is love. Is love. Joy. Joy. Peace. Peace. Long suffering. Long suffering. Gentleness. Gentleness. Goodness. Goodness. Faith. Faith. Meekness. You know, when I preach hard and tear, send the pieces right then, they say, He's not gentle. <laughs> gentle. He's not. Pastor Jen. I had one preacher say, well, why don't you be nice and maybe more people will come. The Bible told me to preach the word. Paul said, though I be rude in speech, yet not in knowledge. Oh, no. The Bible ain't telling me to be gentle in preaching. No. Huh? No. Don't you know God? Listen, when God Almighty make a preacher, he had the nature of a lamb and a lion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why? That's the nature of Jesus. That's right. The Bible called Jesus a lamb. Behold. One come after me, that's mighty than I. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. John said, behold, the Lamb of God. Lamb of God. But then Judah said, uh, or rather Jacob said, the Lion of the tribe of Judah. That's right. That's in the preacher. Mm -hmm. He's a lion and a lamb. Yeah. The, lion, uh, the lion of him is his boldness, his authority. He's preached with the authority of the Holy Ghost. That's right. The lamb of him is his humility by submitting to the lion and then offering his body as a sacrifice to the lion. That's right. Hmm? Are you listening? Hallelujah. I got to submit to the lion. Oh, yes. And I'm offering my body up to the lion. Mm -hmm. And if I get hurt or get wounded, amen, the lion will heal my wound. That's right. Glory to God. But the fruit of the Spirit. What you mean the lion? God. God. Glory to God. The Bible talk about his voices as a roaring lion. That's right. I mean, he speak with authority and he speak with power. Mm -hmm. Amen. And that's another thing that preachers don't like because this message moves people like an earthquake. Oh, yeah. It just moves them. That's right. Come on, son. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Love. Joy. Joy. Peace. Peace. Long suffering. Long suffering. Gentleness. Gentleness. Goodness. Goodness. Faith. Faith. Meekness. Meekness. Temperance. Temp Self-control. Against, against such, such there is no law. There is no law. And they that are Christ, they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. Have crucified the will of the flesh and lusts. All right, go back to the book of uh, St. John. Back in St. John 15 and at verse 2. That's what you got to produce. Look at what he said about the branches. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit. Every branch in me that's not productive. He taketh away. Now, if you plant a seed for a peach tree, mm. peaches don't break out overnight. No. Does it? No, no, no. Not only that, when you do see peaches, they have to be ripe before you can eat them. That's right. Ripe mean ready. Ready. Now. So, if they are ready, then they are what? Harvest, correct? Harvest. As it stands now, we're not ripe. Yeah. So, Jesus ain't coming to harvest yet. That's right. Harvest time will be when he presents to himself. Yeah. A glorious church. Yes. Come on. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, uh -huh. he taketh away. What else? And every branch that beareth fruit. And listen at this. Every branch, every me, person that's productive. That beareth fruit, he purgeth it. He do what? He purgeth it. He do what? He purgeth it. Wait a minute. Jesus said you're clean through the word that I speak unto you. Unto you. When a thing is purged, it's cleansed. Mm -hmm. He purgeth it. God will clean you. That's right. Uh -huh. That it may bring forth more fruit. Wait a minute. He come along and fix that thing up so it can produce more. More fruit. Look at the truth of God. Amen. Don't tell me this stuff is not purged by the Holy Ghost. Purged by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. It's the Lord's doing. That's right. How many men can go in one place and baptize over a hundred and something people in a two-day period? That's right. They do good if they get ten people Amen. or one. And five years. Yeah. One preacher got so jealous, he said, that's a scam. That stuff is already pre-planned. I don't know these people that's being baptized. No. A brother told me that one fella said, notice Pastor Jennings always talk about those numbers, but you never see the camera scan the crowd to see people get up. The brother told me, he said, Pastor Jennings, after you said that, the very next week when the telecast came on, people stood up and the camera was on them. <laughs> Amen. The souls, it is God. I'm glad we're not doing it. That's right. I am not doing. I'm just a puppet of the Lord. That's it. 
Huh? Amen. Just there with my master. Ready to be used. Yeah. My master said, preach the word. Pull the string. <laughs> master said, preach the word. He's pulled that string on my mouth. Why there's a Bible, sir? <laughs> Come on back to Bible. <laughs> That's right. Are you getting what I'm telling you? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank God. Amen. I must speak the word of him that sent me. I That's must it. do it. Must do it. You that's fighting the truth of God, don't get jealous at us because you don't have no people. That's right. Don't get mad at us because you ain't baptizing nobody. That's right. Don't get mad at us because it takes about 15 little preachers to come together for you to have folk. Mm. Don't get mad at us. Amen. I'm not responsible for you being out there. The devil is. I ain't got nothing to do with it. No. This is the true church by the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. The thing that started on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. That's why when it's the true church, you get the results of the true church. That's right. Huh? Every branch. Every branch. That bears fruit. You cannot be the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't have the results of the church. That's right. What is one of the results of the church? God added. How often? Daily. How often? Daily. How often? Daily. How often? Daily. Daily. That's the results of the church. That's right. That's right. Huh? Every branch is written. Amen. He said every branch. That beareth fruit. That bear fruit. He purges it. He purges it. That it may that bring, it forth, bring more forth more fruit. fruit. Now ye are clean through the word yeah. which I have spoken unto you. That's, hallelujah. Wow. That's what I clean you up. That's it. Through the word that I speak unto you. Real quick. Abide in me. Uh oh, there it is. Now. What did that say? Abide in me. Go back to the epistle of John. I want to connect language. Back in 1 John 3 and at verse 9. What it says? His seed remaineth in him. Uh -huh. Abide in me. Read the whole verse there. Whosoever is born of God. Whoever is born of God. Does not commit sin. Do not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. His seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin. He cannot sin. Because he is born of God. So that seed got to remain. When a thing remain, it abides. Abides. And what did Jesus say in St. John? Abide in me. How do you abide in Jesus? Stay in his word. That's right. Stay in his agenda. Yeah. Stay with his will. And that'll make you stable, sound. You won't be double-minded. You won't be moved by what people say. That's right. People write me, Pastor Jennings, this preacher over here said this. This preacher over here said that. Pastor Jennings, this preacher over here said the other. This preacher made me mad. Why are you all upset and I'm not phased? Amen. Preachers in Europe hollering about us. I, I'm, not, I'm not phased. I'm focused. Yes, you Jesus are. is coming. Yes. That's huh? right. Jesus is coming. Amen. Oh, we'll take God, do you hear? Amen. Come on. Abide in me. Stay in him. And I in you. Wait a minute. Do you see how it works? Mm -hmm. You stay in him. And I in you. Look at the term. That's right. That's right. Stay in him. Abide in me. And stay in him. And then, I. And I in you. And then I in you. That's right. Now, for him to be in you and you in him, his word comes in you through teaching. Yeah. You got two wills. Our will, the will of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So we have to abide in his will, and then his will would abide in us. That's right. The only difference is he would never force his will upon us. Yeah. Not by any means. That's right. Listen. Abide in me. I had one man write me because he was so upset with me preaching against sin, they say, oh, you, you, you think that somebody going to be holy overnight? No. 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 The problem with people, they're not used to a preacher preaching the Bible. They're just not used to it. They've been used to a song and a dance. I often make this parable, this example. A man or a child or a little kid, boy or girl, if they are not used to discipline, they're going to feel uncomfortable in a disciplined atmosphere. Yeah. So that's why many children think grandma or granddaddy is mean. 
Mother and father don't reprimand it and get away with stuff. They call it cute. But an old school look at it as disrespect. You see, young parents may see their child hit back at them and say, oh, where ain't grandma and grandpa look at the hit them and take that hand. What's the matter with you? Yeah. You know the way them old mothers do? They ball that lip up. What's the matter with you? What's wrong with you? You better get yourself ready. <laughs> That's right. It words all muffled, but you get it. You better get yourself ready. <laughs> But the young generation would say, it's cute. So discipline teach you what is respect and what is disrespect, what is honor, what is dishonor. And because the word of God, here, 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 give me the book of Isaiah, read mm-hmm. quick, son. my God, uh, the 55th chapter. 55th chapter. I want to show you the clash of mentality. In Isaiah 55, and we're at verse 8. There's a clash in mentality between mm-hmm. the way we think mm-hmm. and the way God thinks. For my thoughts. Give chapter and verse. Isaiah 55, and at verse 8. God talking. My thoughts. My thoughts. Are not your thoughts. Is that plain enough? Amen. Anyone here didn't get it, raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Oh, we all got it? Okay. God says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts is to smoke. Your thoughts is to drink. Your thoughts is to get even. Your thoughts is to carry a gun. Your thoughts is to rape. Your mm. thoughts is to steal. Your thoughts is to go clubbing. Your thoughts is to go break in that house. Your thoughts are the carjack. Your thoughts is to take advantage of people. Your thoughts is to steal money. Your thoughts is to cheat on your income taxes. Your thoughts to claim your nephews to be your son. Your thoughts to claim your niece to be your daughter. You hypocrite. Glory to God. My thoughts, my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts is that the hair that God made you ain't good enough. That's right. But God thought says, well, when he saw this creation, he said it was good. It was good. Your thoughts is go to Walgreens and buy some hair. Your thoughts is buy some hair extensions. Your thought, is, your thought is buy some bangs. Your thought is buy a green wig. Your thought is buy a blue wig. Your thought is buy a red wig. Your, your thought is put on a burgundy suit with a burgundy wig. That's a right. brown suit and a brown wig. That's a right. lavender suit and a lavender wig. Amen. Your thought is to go to the club and just shake yourself. That's right. Ah! My thoughts. I shall thoughts are not your thoughts. God thoughts says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of God is not in the man. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but is of the world. Mm-hmm. The world pass away in the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God shall abide forever. God thoughts says, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where Christ has made Hallelujah. you free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. God thought is free. Flee also fleshy lust that war against the soul. God thought is there's no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus that made us free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, and that was weak to the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law may be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But to be carnal minded is death. Hallelujah. Go ahead. Glory to God and be spiritual minded. His life and peace for the kind of mind is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be as God thoughts. My thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you hear the Bible talking? My here? thoughts are not your thoughts. Amen. God don't think like you, and you don't think like him. No, no. And God wants us to think like him. That's right. And for us to think like him, you need a change of nature. That's right. And for your nature to be changed, you got to be born all over again. All over again. Being born all over again, he changed your nature and he changed your character. That's right. You see, when a child comes from the womb, it's covered with afterbirth. Yeah. Proof that it used to be in the place formerly. Yeah. In darkness. In darkness. And when it comes from the wound, it's covered with the afterbirth. So what the doctor got to do? Clean it up. Yeah. When you're out there in the world and come to Christ, you're covered with afterbirth, filth. Yeah. That's why you're covered with drugs and liquor and smoke and everything else. You got that afterbirth. And here we come with the scriptures to wipe it off, wipe clean it off. you up. That's right. Huh? That's right. Hey Amen. Clean you all up. Bless God and tell you, we, we point you to water. They get your dirt washed away. That's Repent. Right. Repent. We, we tell you like the apostle, here's water. Here's water. Huh? What tell is thou? That's right. Arise. Glory to God and be baptized. Wow. 
wash away. Call and wash away thine sins. Yeah. Calling upon the name of the Lord. Amen. You got afterbirth. Yeah. That's why you think the way you do, act the way you do, want to go to places where you want to go because the afterbirth is not all gone. That's, right. That's why you have to constantly be washed. Even after you baptize in the name of Jesus Christ, after you receive the Holy Ghost, that's natural water for a spiritual purpose. Yeah. Now you got to use water in the form of spirit. Oh, yeah. Someone said, wait, 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 Pastor, I didn't catch that. Let me go back. The baptism is natural water used for a spiritual purpose. But now you got to use water in the form of spirit. That's right. The woman at the well. Yeah. Oh, it take God, she saw Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We, we, we ain't got nothing to draw with. Oh, yeah, you greater than our father Jacob. Hey, woman, if you knew who it was, I was asking you for drink. For drink. You, you would ask him for drink. That's right. And here as Jesus began to lay some good groundwork to the woman. Right. And, and, and after right. Jesus got it over to her, he let her know that, 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 that she went on testifying yeah. to the people, uh, to the men of the things that Jesus said. Come and see a man. Then, listen, she said, come see a man. Which told me all Get chapter and verse for this. In St. John chapter 4 and at verse 29. Come see a man. Come see a man. Which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? That lets you know she has some teaching. That's right. She has some teaching because there wasn't no New Testament. No. There was no New Testament. Nope. But the Old Testament, Testament lets you know about the coming of Christ. That's right. The Bible says, talk about living water. Mm -hmm. Then it says, this spake he of the Spirit. Of the Spirit. Of the Spirit. Yeah. This spake he of the Spirit. That's right. So that's what I mean how now you got to have spirit water in the form of spirit. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, the words that I spake unto you, they are are spirit, spirit and they are life. life. So now we got to use spirit, which is God's word, mm -hmm. to clean you up. He that, he that believeth on me. Listen. In St. John 7 and verse 38. He that believeth on me as the scripture had said. Wait a minute. How must we believe on him? As the scripture had said. If the scripture never said he was the second in the person in the Godhead, we ain't saying it. No. We're going to believe on him as the scripture have said. That's right. And the scripture said in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. That's right. Not that he's the second, not that he's the third, but yeah, he's the first and the last. First and the the last. beginning and the end. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. He that believeth on me as the scripture had said. What happened? Out of his belly. Out! Of his belly shall, shall flow, flow rivers. rivers of living water. Shall what going to come? Flow rivers of living water. What was he talking about? But this spake he of the Spirit. What was he talking about? This spake he of the Spirit. And what did he call the Spirit? Living water. What did he call the Spirit? Living water. And what was he talking about? This spake he of the Spirit. And what did he call the Spirit? L living water. And what was he talking about? This spake he of the Spirit. The Bible said the words that I spake unto you, they are Spirit and they are life. So come on to the church by Hallelujah. the Lord Jesus Christ and get your afterbirth clean. Hallelujah. Because we got a cleaning solution here, That's which right. is God's word. That's right. It said you're clean through the word that I speak unto you. That's right. Are you listening? Hallelujah. All right. That's when that seed abideth, abideth in, you, in him. Stay in you. It has to be in there for a long period of time, and you grow in it, and it grow in you, mm -hmm. and it'll help you to master the life. What do you mean the life? You will live the way God wants us to live. That's right. Go back to the book of Romans so I can finish up. Back in Romans chapter 7. Everybody all right? Hallelujah. Oh, this is, this, this is good today. Oh, yes. Come on. Back in Romans 7 and verse 23. But I see another law in my members. I see another law in my members. Warring against the law of my mind. You got another law in your members now. You hear the Bible says repent of your sins. And now you debate. Well, debate. Pastor Jennings, I don't know. I, I know you tell the truth, but I'm not ready, Pastor Jennings. I'm not ready to be baptized yet. Are you ready to go to hell? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, Pastor Jennings. I ain't ready to go to hell, but yet you're not ready to get right. Look right. at you. But yet you're getting ready for your Christmas party, you heathen. That's right. <laughs> Notice how to do for God, you ain't ready. Yeah. But to do for the devil, you ready. <laughs> I'm ready. That's right. You're ready right away. That's right. Ready real quick. Real quick. To do for the devil. Mm -hmm. People write me, Pastor Jennings, uh, will you baptize me next year? People, so I have people ask me to call them, and I call them. Uh, this is Pastor Jennings, and, you know, they you know, get happy and whatnot. And, uh, and they say, Pastor Jennings, uh, I would like to be baptized next year. And I'm talking to you early March of the year before. <laughs> Amen. 
And I'm like, why do you want to wait next year? Well, Pastor Jenna, yeah, everything is not out of me yet. And this is another mistake that people make. You think everything going to be out of you in thought and in mind when you are baptized? No. no you must repent of the wrong you've done. And when you're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, right then you have consented or agreed to surrender. surrender. Now, surrendering will not happen overnight. Until you must be done line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little until you mastered, and then you could sing, I surrender all. That's right. Wonderful, wonderful. That's right. Until you surrender all, you can't sing that. Sing that. You may as well, don't even say it, you'll be telling a lie. Amen. Amen. It sounds good. I surrender. I surrender all. Ah, sound like Al Jolson. I surrender. Mammy, I surrender all. <laughs> you sound like all Al Jolson. Come to Jesus. Oh, what was the other part, Williams? I believe it's my precious Savior. My precious Savior. He came from Reverend Ike. He knows it. <laughs> huh? Williams come from Reverend Ike. He knows it. Amen. I'm watching you. Glory to God. So you can sing a lie quick as you can tell one. Oh, yeah. Do you understand what I'm telling you? Amen. We sang that song, I want to be just like him. Just like him. Man, do you know what God demands out of you? Want to be just like him? All right. But are you ready to be just like him? Just like him. Mm. When you understand the demand that the Lord of heaven and earth puts upon the human being, it is not an overnight success of living holy. You will not accomplish everything you desire to accomplish in God overnight. Paul said, I die how? Daily. How? Daily. How? Daily. So, therefore, if a person is ill and in the hospital and they are in a dying condition, they're not dead. Yeah. So the one that's dying must be monitored. So if you are dying to your sin, when you are dead, then you are free from sin. But until then, you are dying. So therefore, your life of dying out from sin must be monitored so no spiritual affection set in your life and cause you to go back in the thing that you're trying to come out of. That's right. Are you listening? Amen. Sometimes a person is dying, an affection set in. Because the hospital didn't treat them right. And that's what happened in churches. There are people that really want to be saved. But the preachers have failed in giving you the right medicine. The Bible says, is there a bomb in Gilead? They have failed to give you the right medicine, the right nourishment, the right teaching, the right gospel, the right doctrine. That's right. Divorce will keep you ill. Yeah. Reimagine divorce will keep you sick. Oh, yeah. Two guards that keep you sick. That's right. Women preachers keep you sick. Yeah. Don't believe in head covering, keep you sick. No speaking in tongue, keep you sick. No rules, no regulation, no discipline, and keep you sick. Oh, yeah. There's a bomb here. And the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Designed to cure you. That's why the false prophets, when they scream, because they're ill. <laughs> Amen. They're ill. Oh, yeah. Amen. Glory to God. But I remember years ago, preaching in Philadelphia, he's passed on now. I never forget he got over the radio. I wasn't even on television at the time. I don't think, if I'm not mistaken, but I was on radio for years. He got over the radio yelling about me one day, just yelling and hollering. And I called two members out of his organization, of his church. I said, Deacon so and so and mother so and so, you keep yelling. They're going to be with me in a few weeks. He heard that message and almost cussed over the radio. <laughs> he got over the radio and praised them too. They come from Bishop Johnson. You don't know what you're talking about. They are rooted in what I'm talking. Nothing can move them. And about two weeks time, they were sitting on Frankfurt Avenue. Amen. Because they was able to discern good and evil. Good and evil. You preachers that's hollering about First Church, anything negative you say about Pastor Jennings, I just want you to understand that you are helping us. 
I am so honored. I am so privileged to have so many demons in America. <laughs> That's right. I want to encourage you to talk loud, cry loud, speak loud. You're not a preacher. You have no anointing. You're moved by the devil, for the devil, with the devil, and founded by the devil. So I encourage you, work for him. Work for him. <laughs> work for him. You work for him. That's right. My God will beat you long as you breathe. That's right. Hallelujah. The gates of hell. Not prevail against we got a we got a privacy fence around the church. Oh yes. So so high it reached from earth into heaven Hallelujah. until Jesus said the gates of hell. Shall not prevail against it. Shall not prevail against it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. They would always have something to say about the church in Pastor Jenna. Yeah. Always. Because even the devil knows somebody will believe it. That's true. But I keep telling people. The church is focused, mm -hmm. and we're standing sound, very sound, oh, yeah. not moving, for nobody, with nobody. That's right. But we're take God, we see what God is doing, and he's doing a great wonder. In these last days, Amen. in these last days, I can't wait to hear the number of this year, next week, how many was baptized already. We was already at, I think, over 1,200, and we was in the month of July. Mm. Over 1,200 was baptized, and that was already at the month of July. Over 1,200 souls was baptized, and many received the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues, and that was up to the seventh month of July. Amen. That was before we even went to Houston, before we even went to Detroit and the mother Detroit. areas. The souls just keep coming in. That's right. And it won't stop. Finish up. But I the book see, of Romans. Romans 7 and verse 23. All right. But I see another law in my members. What is it doing? Warring against the law of my mind. Don't let the devil beat you down Warring. and not obey God. You need to repent of your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and come out of your man-made religion and walk with the truth of God. Leave your church. That's right. I know some of you people watching and you that are here may never heard of a man that said leave your church, but it was said before I was born. Before the born. Bible says come out from among them and be separate. Right. Say of the Lord, not say of Geno Jennings, and touch not the unclean thing. Don't even, don't even touch the false prophet. Hey? That's right. He's unclean. That's right. All right. But I see another law in my memory. What is it doing? Warring against the law of my mind. Uh -huh. And bringing me into captivity. Bringing you into bondage. To the law of sin. To the law of sin. Which is in my members. You want to be sprinkled for baptism. You want to join the church. You want to bow your head and raise your hands. You want to claim you have the Holy Ghost in some fake apostolic church that don't, don't believe in speaking in another tongue like they did on the day of Pentecost. You want to walk around and be in a church that tell you there is no apostles now, even mm -hmm. though the Bible says God has set them first in the church. in the church. God ain't never said it ain't none now. No. He said they in the church. That's right. Amen. Huh? Amen. Repent, Delaware. Repent, Delaware, and don't step in your church ever again. Come out from among them. Come walk with the truth of God. It'll be the best decision of your life. That's right. Anybody want to obey God? And be ready when the Lord Jesus come for creation. And if you want to be on God's side and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, stand on your feet. If you don't want to go to hell and want to be baptized, stand on your feet. Come on, stand on your feet. Come on and walk with God. Stand on your feet. All of you that are standing, you see them brother and sister back there? Go right back there where they are. All of you that are standing. All right, Brother Minister Craig, get yourself ready, brother. 21 went down last night and some more going down now. Hallelujah. You know, Bishop, Bishop Ellis always say, and the Lord good? <laughs> and the Lord good? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for you that's getting your life together so you can get on God's side. Amen. Amen. When God sent a preacher... You don't know how long God's going to keep him around. But he's nothing but a pilgrim. Traveling and passing through. 
Don't tell me this is not the last days. There's not a preacher in America that's being used in this manner. Amen. Where people are coming by countless of numbers yeah. and go. I'm not making this up. Check. Check it. Preachers come visit us from all around the world in different places. I was in Monroe, Louisiana, and there was a preacher who came from PAW. I think that day over 50 something people went down in water. He came to me and said, Pastor Jennings, we haven't baptized three people in about seven years. Mm. It's not Pastor Jennings, it's God, it's God in me. Because God said, nobody can come unless my father oh, draw him. him. So preachers, ask yourself why nobody coming. It's because God is not drawing them to you. Right. God is drawing the world to the truth of God. Amen. God is doing it. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. I know you don't like don't it, like but it. you can't stop it. Mm -hmm. eh? Amen. Can't stop it. <laughs> eh? Amen. They, well, they want the people to do to me what a grave do to a corpse. That's right. They want them to shun Pastor Jen. That's right. They keep forgetting they're up against God. Yeah. Right, you, got, you, you, you try to shun the man of God, God Almighty, or get him behind you and send him right back to him. Yes, he will. Huh? Look at the backsliders that's coming back, coming back. One brother left. I haven't talked to him in... Uh, I, haven't, I, I spoke to him for the first time I was in South Carolina. First time I seen him in 11 years. Mm. First time I seen him and talked to him. We haven't talked or seen each other. Amen. He talked to me. And then we talked again since. He want to come back and walk with the word of God. Wonderful. He want to come back. Wonderful. Talked to him the other day. He said, Pastor Jennings. I haven't, he said, I see these preachers down here in the South yelling about you. He said, but they're not doing no work. Yeah. Isn't it somehow a person got a lot to say and you don't, you don't have no work? No work. When God send you, God gives you a work. That's right. The devil want to sink the ship <laughs> because they think I'm at the helm. Amen. I'm not. God is. That's right. He's at the helm and he's the engine. That's right. I'm just one of the sailors. Hmm. Ownership. Mm -hmm. And they don't like it because we're determined to keep the deck clean. That's right. That's we're right. using scripture. The scrub creation. Scrub. Huh? <laughs> Amen. Getting scripture. Amen. Lift that bucket. Get that bell. Get that chapter. Get that verse. Get that prophet. Get that apostle. Zoop. You got to get it. <laughs> got to get it. That's right. They want me to get away from the Bible. Mm -hmm. I had a preacher tell me, Pastor Jennings, you know, I, I believe what you're preaching is truth, but don't you think you kind of stay in the Bible too much? Wow. This is the way they think. This is the way they feel. Mm. Preacher wrote me, will you consider divorce? And gave me his number. I called him back. I said, this is Pastor Jennings. Oh, Pastor Jennings, how are you, sir? I said, I'm just calling you in reference to the email you sent me. You asked me, will I consider divorce? Yeah, Pastor Jennings, would you? I said, no. Hung up. <laughs> Why? I'm not even going to have the conversation. That's right. If God said he hated, I'm going to hate it. Yeah. You and your second husband can live together, have children together, have a bank account together, join an account, buy a must and a tang. Let them <laughs> buy you a car together. Share it. Share mortgage. God said, I hate divorce. Hate he hated. Yeah. And every preacher that preaches are backsliders and sinners. That's right. They love what God hates. Mm -hmm. And when you love what God hates, you are truly a product of the devil. Amen. When you don't know no better, you can't be held accountable. But this message that's covering the world is dealing with practically every subject that come up. And God is just robbing every human of every excuse under the sun. You can't go before God. I'm ignorant. He said, you're inexcusable, right. old man. That's right. You're going to put earmuffs on. The word that go through the earmuffs. Yeah. You're going to get it. Oh, yeah. I'm, I marvel and I'm amazed how so many thousands are telling me how they get in this program. Mm. That never heard of us. 
a common statement that's coming in by email. And these people don't know each other from different states telling me how I'm just popping up randomly on their phone. Wow. Talked to a man in Sacramento, California. He said he was outside grilling, having a beautiful time listening to the blues on his phone. He said, I was outside grilling, listening to the blues. All of a sudden, my phone said, bing, and I looked at it, and you was on there. He said, I never heard of you. <laughs> never heard of you, never saw you. He said, I see what this was. Wow. He said, man, I've been listening to you ever since. Mm -hmm. I turned the blues off. He said, I kept grilling, though. <laughs> he said, I turned the blues off and listened to you ever since. He, said, he went down in water mm. in the name of Jesus Christ. All around the world, they're popping up. Mm. Now, now, this is what false prophets is trying to do. They're trying, I got a letter where, I don't know who the person is. They said, Pastor Jennings, there are people on YouTube who's trying to delete your messages off YouTube everywhere. Mm. That's how bad preachers and people are getting together with people that have some form of computer savvy trying to delete the truth of God off YouTube. My Lord. Notice, they ain't trying to get rid of Jake's. They ain't trying to get rid of nobody else. That's right. They're trying to get rid of us because we got that foot in them with the gospel. That's right. Hey? That's right. They feel the foot of the gospel in them. <laughs> That's right. Can't shout too well because the <laughs> foot, <laughs> foot is in them. They look back, the look back. foot of the gospel is in them. <laughs> That's right. That's hey! Amen. <laughs> yeah, some group of folks from these little false churches calling each other. Trying to delete. Hmm. And they try to insert other preachers where the truth of God is. So look out for it. Wow. Some of them go as far. This is another slick way they done. Some of them go as far as editing, putting the introduction of our telecast on theirs. Then when our introduction go off, they come on. We don't have to resort to these childish measures. That's right. Because we know that the word that we preach by God's permission is true. true. But they are obsessed with the success of the truth of God. That's what it is. Mm. That shows a man is weak. Yeah. A real man ain't obsessed with no other man. No. You're weak. Something is wrong with you. Amen. Huh? Something is wrong. Something wrong. You understand something is wrong. Yes. That's right. You understand something is wrong. <laughs> Glory to God. Am I right, brothers? Talk back to me. Hallelujah. A man that's obsessed with another Hallelujah. man, something is wrong with that's you. That's a problem. Something is wrong. You got too much flour in you. That's right. Huh? That's Somebody right. trying to make some homemade biscuits, getting that flour and dough. Amen. Something is wrong with you. Wrong. A man that's a real man ain't worrying about no other man. No. Who's got time to sit around and worry about the growth of a church? Mm. They watch the truth of God with loyalty. Their members watch it. The preachers watch it. Mm. The preachers tell people, don't watch Pastor Jennings, and then they watch it. <laughs> That's right. I've had people come from other churches. There were some people came to Augusta mm. a few weeks ago. Pastor Jennings, my pastor don't know I'm here. I'm like, who your pastor? They said, don't worry about it, but don't, <laughs> they don't know I'm here. But they, every time they tell us not to watch you, and then they get up and preach what you say on a telecast. And we sit out there and say, I thought you told us not to watch that man. <laughs> and the preachers are watching. Lord. You know, there's some movies you watch. It's so good. I don't care how many times you watch it. It makes you laugh all the time. 
I don't care how many times you download this message and make you feel good all the time. All the Every time you hear it, you just learn more and more and more. Oh, yeah. Villas, the reason why Satan ministers don't want you to watch it because no demon wants you to learn. They don't want you to learn the truth of the gospel. And they want to keep you ignorant, deaf, dumb, and blind. That's right. And when you're ignorant, deaf, dumb, and blind, that empowers and emboldens these cheap devils in the pulpit who want you to believe they're a man of God. When they say they're a man of God, they didn't lie. Mm -hmm. They're a man of the God of this world. Because of this world. They're not a man of the God of heaven. No. They are men of the God of this world that blind the minds of them that believe not. All right. Hallelujah. Souls is getting ready to be baptized. Come on back this evening at five o'clock. I know some of you ain't used to going to church twice. Some of you go to church once and then you go home and watch the ball game. <laughs> but you might as well come on back. But if you go home, make sure you tear down your bar. If you don't tear it all down, start this afternoon and then come back for service and then go back and finish it that night. Pull all your bottles of Jack Daniel and vodka and your vodka and eggnog. You getting ready for Heathen's Day. That's Pull right. it out. That's right. Pull it out. Take your Christmas tree and set it outside early in the trash. That's right. With the lights on it. With the lights on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't take the lights off. Huh? Don't take the lights off. Grab Santa off your rooftop. Drag them down there. Just drag them down and drag them to the curb also. Get old Rudolph and the rest of the lying deer. Drag them to the curb. Take your old hypocrite and presents that your second wife bought you and throw it in the trash. Amen. I'm laboring to keep you out of hell. Yeah. But if you want to go to hell, you will burn well. Oh, yeah. May God help you. Come on back at 5 o'clock. Let us all stand. Brother Minister Webb will close us out in prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your loving kindness and tender mercy. We thank you for your word today. Help us to allow your word to sink down in our hearts and our minds. Give us the will, Lord God, to strive to obey your word according to your will. Lord, as we leave this place but never your presence, we ask you to be with us. Have mercy upon us until we meet again. In the name of Jesus Christ and all of God's people say, amen. Come on back at 5 o'clock. May God bless you.